Hello, uh, Struck Club. Welcome back to another day of streaming uh, Torch Light 3. Today I will be starting a new hero um, on the live server and it will be a sharpshooter with the electrode. Uh, whether it's gonna end up being like my electrified sharpshooter build remains to be seen. I will be testing different things. I will be testing things like Onswold to see how well Onswold works. So here we are finally I'm back to Torch Light 3. Uh, um, I'm done with Baldur's Gate 3 for a while. I mean, uh, I'm not done done. <laughs> That's a game you can't be done <laughs> with easily uh, and quickly. Uh, I've uploaded uh, today a new video, by the way, when it comes to Baldur's Gate 3. Um, it will be up soon. It will be up soon. Actually, it should be up um, in like a few minutes. Uh, I'm just still waiting for Google to approve it. But... Uh, yeah, uh, there will be soon my early imp access impressions, uh, extended overview, but for now let's do this uh, build. Let's do this uh, uh, electrode uh, sharpshooter. Uh, should we do male, female? Uh, I mean, let's do a guy this time. Last time I think it was uh, female, that sharpshooter. Electrode, uh, let's do it like this. Um, Alright, there we go. Electrode, boom. Boom. Most likely it will either be targeted strikes or tight grouping uh, or maybe even testing on out. I will be testing a lot of things as I'm going. I will be experimenting with a lot of stuff as I play. Um, I'm trying to keep it as close as possible to the electrified sharpshooter so that when people ask me if I've got a build for somewhere for the build I'm playing I could always redirect them to the electrified one so yeah that's kind of um, gonna be it for this build let me actually also post on discord while it's loading and um, that is it. So yeah, I will be playing on Ridiculous as I see, uh, as you see. Um, if I end up uh, thinking that it's too much of a swap and it's taking too long to do certain things, I might switch down to lower difficulty, but I'm gonna try and play it uh, on Ridiculous um, for the most part. Uh, we'll see. If anyone wants to co-op, I'm wel welcome um, to playing um, in others, uh, uh, with others in co-op. I mean, I normally try to play solo when I'm leveling, but uh, everyone's welcome to join me today if you want to. If you have a hero that has just started, and you want to just uh, group up and play together, I wouldn't mind uh, grouping up uh, with you. I will be skipping some of the cinematics, but if someone thinks like they want the cinematics, if you want to watch the cinematics, let me know. Um, I would let you watch those too. I leveled up too many heroes. <laughs> too many heroes in this game. It's a bit slow at the start, uh, if you're wondering. Uh. I'm probably going to do what I normally do while leveling up uh, electrode builds. I normally invest early on in chaotic strikes and play it as a chaotic strikes build. And then eventually later on when I'm higher level, like 46, 7, 8, etc. I switch over to, to the more finalized version of the build. It depends, I mean, it depends on the gear. Need help, and the dead need food. 
Sharpshooter seems to be the hero that most people are enjoying playing. Um, from from the activity on my channel, uh, I think the, the biggest interest uh, is in this class. And uh, I totally understand why. It's actually a very decent class right now. Um, it's pretty strong even early on. Uh, unlike other classes which require a few levels before you can you can feel like they're actually doing uh, proper damage. With this guy and or girl, <laughs> depending uh, what you're playing with this class, as long as you have a strong weapon, you will have um, you will have decent damage. And the skills definitely can deliver. Okay, um, just wanted to do something with the pet. Pet, uh, let's go crit chance. Actually, let's kill some enemies here before going into, into hero's rest. Let's get level 3. Old Stone Squarry and uh, Oleg, welcome, welcome back, Oleg. Nice to see you again. Where's the enemies here? And uh, from what I know, they changed it so there's always at least uh, a, a chest at the end of the of those. Maybe that's uh, something, maybe something's wrong here with this one. There should have been enemies inside this quarry. Or maybe, maybe I misread the patch notes, but I remember them saying that uh, they made sure that there's always one chest in those uh, dungeons, in the li little mini dungeons as they are calling them. I want to get level 3. Actually, let's go uh, go to the waypoint. It's always nice to have this waypoint. If you want to maximize this uh, story, you might want to get that waypoint before going into the hero's rest. what's over here <laughs> well I couldn't get level 3 before heroes rest but um, well uh, I'm gonna go in there anyways they renamed Bruce Killis by the way Bruce Killis the, the enemy at the end of this um, this dungeon has been renamed <laughs> So let's uh, let's check the quest. There's one tombstone over here. Actually, there's two tombstones there. Alright, we're level 3. I'm gonna... Quickly. I'm wondering if I should get the goblins uh, or something else. I could keep uh, I could keep this one. It's just level one for now. There's so many um, 
champion enemies on ridiculous. Nice, almost level 4. Oh, and something blue dropped. It's one handed, not bad, so I can use a shield. Oh, wait, wait, this one was stronger. Yeah, I'm gonna get level 4 and then go for the boss fight. Perfect. Oh, this one's taking a lot of damage. Oh, that reminds me, I'm level 3, I can I can put something in the Legendarium now. So let's, uh, what should I swat in the Legendarium? I'm gonna swat maybe Frenzy's Blade. And go basic attacks for, uh, for a while. Uh, as for what to level up, I'm gonna save points now, I'm saving the next points. In fact, I should have saved the previous point as well. With the next level I'm getting two points. All those two points and this one point are going into uh into what's its name? I forget the name uh I have missed Tombstone. Uh they're gonna go into Ghost Visage, my blink skill. That's normally how I level up at um, the level four and the two points at level five I invest for tier 1 level 3 goes visage for that extra charge I must have missed a tombstone somewhere not sure where but it's gotta be somewhere there oh it's over there never mind I didn't miss it Nice. Slap him with basic attacks. And the rifle, which is not better than my mace. Bow that's not better than my mace. Damage legs. Oh, the game's uh, giving me good drops early on. Fat damage drops this early. You can always uh, 
gamble for stuff, but uh, right now I'm getting lucky, so I don't need to gamble for uh, the right rolls. Alright, let's go to Travel Point. Come on, General. General. It's holding a little bit longer than than normal. May the fallen soldiers rest in peace. We're all grateful for your help, recruit, but we must resume our mission. I need you to gather medicine while we're shorthanded. There are a lot of sick people back in Red Haven counting on you. Are you up to the task? Chance to shock is not bad, but the damage will drop. I'd rather keep the defense. See you next time. Oh, yes. oh, okay. I've got oh, I'll be seeing you soon. Now the next quest, Edgewood Bluff. Right. I'm gonna get level 5 and then enter the next dungeon. Although even if I enter now at level 4, by the time I'm, re I'm uh, doing the boss fight I should be... I should be leveled up. Okay, moving on. Yeah, I'm trying to pull them all together. I think my basic attacks are giving me better DPS right now <laughs> than tight grouping maybe. Of course tight grouping hits multiple. With my mace I can only hit one enemy. Okay, almost level 5. I'm probably not gonna be level 5 before reaching the boss. Uh, I kind of reached the dungeon too quickly. It's still fine though. If I feel like I'm lagging behind on the levels, I can always uh, rewalk and get some enemies to respawn and just kill them a few times. Those basic attacks are super nice. Oh, was he invulnerable? I think he was for a few seconds. Ok, 
Okay, time for Ghost Visage level 3. And a new shield. Not bad. Oh yeah, I forgot the quest uh, items. I love those messages for when you forget something. The quality of life in the current version of the of the game is uh, amazing. There's little details like just this message um, that warns you before leaving a uh, zone that you've got an unfinished quest there. Should I keep uh, killing stuff here or just move to the next zone? Maybe let's just move. But when there's so many grouped up, uh, I kind of feel the need to to slay some goblins. It's just too many not to not to kill them. Kind of can't resist the urge. <laughs> Should be pretty close to the next zone. Uh, this extra wood quality, this extra gear work, not wood quality, but gear work that they added um, again, that uh, that they reinstated for the harder difficulties, is very nice. 20 extra gear work uh, early on in the game, in the first few levels, is pretty nice. You can see how many uh, items are dropping. And due to many items dropping, there's also many blue items dropping. And that's nice, while well, leveling up it really helps. Eventually I'm gonna stop wearing white stuff and just focus on green and blue and uh, legendary. But before I've had uh, times where Sometimes I would find something white that's good and since I haven't gotten anything better I would just keep it for a while. I don't think this is gonna be the case anymore. Okay, we gotta go to Travel Point. Talk to the General. It's loading. Still. Good job with the mushrooms, recruit. What's that? Not Zaya. Okay. This is an upgrade now. Oh, plus one level to tight grouping. No longer a shield. 
user. Wait, at level 5 I can get a helmet, right? Or was that shoulders at level 5, helmet at 7? Yeah, helmet is at level 5. Let's get something with plus 1 to a certain skill level. Okay, I've got some contract levels to collect. You can't catch that here. Right, off to field of unrest. I've already done the fourth quest, that's why the game didn't ask me to do it. I've done it on another hero on this account. But at this point the game would be asking you to do certain account quests, such as the Enchanter's Outer one, the fourth quest and so on. But those quests are once per account only. You do them once on your first hero or on your first playthrough and then uh, you are done with them. On the archer, what quotes are better to collect for health or protection? Oh, definitely defense. Take as much defense as you can. HP is not that great um, unless you really stack shit tons of it and that's probably not gonna be easy. I mean, while leveling, I've also noticed that defense is um, better. Of course, certain things like um, evasion and block chance are also great. If you stack enough evasion and block chance, you're not gonna get hit at all. And um, you have to find the balance between stacking evasion, block chance and defense. Defense is basically resistance uh, to the certain element or to all elements if you're uh, stacking physical. Whereas with HP, eventually, especially if you're playing on ridiculous, the HP is not that great right now. It's one thing getting 60% of the damage mitigated, it's another thing getting uh, 10, 15, 20% uh, extra HP. HP probably will be great uh, when they rework um, when they rework the passive skill in the relic, the, the cold heart relic that gives you HP. Right now you, you can't get that much from the skill, so maybe they're gonna increase the HP that breaking point gives. to make it uh, more worth investing into it because right now breaking point only triggers once every up to 35 seconds at best you're going to be triggering breaking point once every 35 seconds and three times after you activate um, ice shield so it's not going to be that often an ice shield you activate once every 20 seconds So yeah, with the cold heart you get like I think 10% extra HP and that's not gonna be that much. On 60 or 70,000 that's 6 or 7,000 extra HP. So with that you can probably try and stack 80,000 and get up to 88,000 and it's not gonna be uh, equal to, to getting uh, a bunch of extra uh, damage uh, reduction from stacking resistances. So for now HP is more of an underwhelming uh, thing to stack. I mean it's always nice to have some more extra HP. But um, I'd rather have more defense than, than HP if, if it was choice between the two.
I'm gonna go grab the waypoint first. This way now. Thomas is asking, uh, "Hi, I reached with uh, Bane Relic Realm Master 60 today. Hard grind. Uh, the last, yeah, the last few levels, uh, they've definitely increased a lot of the XP required for the last four levels. And um, uh, regarding how to fast legendaries very quickly, uh, I can't show you right now because I'm not uh, in, in the end game. But what you want is to do the Fazir's dungeon." You want to do the Fazir's Dungeon and you want to look for a map that has at the same time uniques at the top and at the bottom of the card you're looking for uh, infamous. So when you find an infamous uniques map, this is the best uh, fame. So you're not farming items as drop, you're farming fame. And with fame you're getting uh, legendary gear bundles and with the legendary gear bundles you get one legendary item per bundle and if you're lucky to get such a map you can get between 20 and 35 contract levels on ridiculous from a single uh, fazir's dungeon map um, that has the uniques and infamous which means between two and three and a half um, legendary items which is uh, a great amount of uh, gear for a single map run excluding drops and you don't have to even do level 60 maps. If you do level 60 maps, you can get level 60 monsters and level 60 drops. But again, your main uh, your main source of legendaries is not drops, it's um, it's gear bundles. So that's the fastest current way of uh, farming uh, gear. If you're after legendary gear, if you're after blue gear, you also can do it through contracts because you also get blue gear bundles. Uh, in the contracts, so uh, on the infinite whoop you get two gear bundles that are blue every nine levels, one gear bundle that is uh, legendary every uh, nine levels after you reach level 40. So you max out this contract, maybe max out the second, maybe max out the third and then start spamming um, the adventurer contract for farming. And uh, whenever you get bored of the fuzzers you can do map works. Uh, but again, uh, the Fazir's is the only place where you can get uh, infamous unique, uh, you, where you can get this immense amount of fame per single map run. Uh, there is a way to abuse it and to cheat the system, uh, which is not cheating, it's not exploiting, it's just using the way the system is designed to your advantage. Uh, if you're doing a current map, I strongly suggest not doing it because it might be a little bit boring uh, doing it that way. But if you're in an infamous unique map and you kill all the enemies and the map tells you to go kill the boss, you can, instead of killing the boss, you can go to character selection, then go back to your fort and you can redo this map and the map will never disappear. But the way I like doing it is uh, I like to just look for infamous unique maps after each run. After each run, the map uh, the map affixes change, and then I just go and check uh, whatever map has infamous uniques and do that one. If there isn't infamous unique, uh, pick unique. If you have to pick between a map with only infamous or only uniques, pick the one with the only uniques. It's gonna be um, the better option. Of course, infamous uniques is always the best option. But yeah, that's kind of uh, my advice on the current um, the current best way to farm uh, stuff. But you need to you need to be doing that on an account that has finished the story. If you haven't finished the story, you can't access the Fazir. The Fazir is only available for heroes who have completed Act One, Two, and Three, who have finished the main story of the game, beaten the final boss. Once you defeat Ordrak, uh, 
uh, you can access um, the Fazir on every hero. Even if you make a new hero now, uh, and you have already unlocked the Fazirs on your first, the new one would not be able to participate in, in the end game until it clears Act 3. I'm not a big fan of how they're handling this to make me on every single hero I make to unlock the end game. I would much rather have to unlock it once per class. One on the sharpshooter, one on the forged, one on the dusk mage, one on the realm master. But whenever I make a second one of those, I would prefer to have it already unlocked. So I don't have to to grind the story on every single playthrough. Because think of how much uh, grinding that is. It's like around 10-15 hours uh, or 10-12 hours. Uh, if you're working maybe if you're fast 8 hours of story. Just so you can unlock the end game on a new hero. But this is just me uh, kind of being, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of am, um, am worn out on, on doing the story. I've done the story so many times, I just um, mentally can't handle grinding the story. Right now it feels like torture leveling this hero without, uh, without uh, being able to, to boost it quickly. But since it's my first playthrough of the account, it's not that bad. It's my first playthrough after the wipe on this uh, on this server. I did uh, play for a while on the test server as well. Multiplayer is where the game becomes fun. When you're playing a playthrough which is your 10th, 15th, 20th, 30th playthrough and you're playing solo, it could be a little bit boring, but if you have someone to, to group up with, um, it's a little bit less boring. And the game is definitely designed in such a way that playing with others is beneficial to everyone. You get uh, a better gear work buff, 15 extra percent gear work. Which makes reaching the 100% gear work cap a little bit easier without relying on... Without relying on uh, items too much. Because you can get 20% gear work from playing on Ridiculous, 15% extra by having one more person in your team, at least. And that's 35% gear work from a cap of 100, just, um, just there. But Ridiculous is definitely nice now. I need a good one-handed weapon, it's not dropping. I'm gonna play with two-handed for now, I guess. Which reminds me, I've got uh, two extra skill points to spend. Should I go for a Chaotic Strikes setup while leveling up? It's super easy um, to level up with Chaotic Strikes. Should I test Onslaught? Actually, I want to test Onslaught. See how it goes for leveling up. Let's, let's test it. Although Onslaught is probably not the best thing to test right away. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna wait for one more level up. See if I compare this to targeted strikes, you can see targeted strikes is the better option to level up with. Now let's compare Onslaught to it. Onslaught is good if you have reward. And the vote was uh, the vote was level 10 skill, so you can't get reward until level 10. And also out is good with Royal Shasta. If you have Royal Shasta, she can taunt and group up the enemies for you.
But yeah, I'm gonna try playing this build with Onslaught instead of targeted strikes. Just a little bit of a difference to my electrified sharpshooter build. But it is gonna be basically the electrified sharpshooter just instead of targeted strikes. I will be playing with Onslaught. Oh, Crunch is there. I need to kill the Rangers before I deal with the tough guy. But in general any skill works, any precision skill would work. Um, the way I like to play this build, I play it as a proc monster build, so anything other than scatter shot would be good. Because scatter shot doesn't have good um, hits per second rating. So it's not that great for uh, proc monster builds. It can still work, uh, just not as good. for the way I want to play the build. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see here. Two blue balls. And Thomas Gatsios, uh, the build I've got in my on my on my uh, web page, uh, the electrified sharpshooter is basically what uh, what uh, this will look like, similar. It will be almost the same as the electrified sharpshooter, with very small changes. Instead of instead of targeted strikes, I will be using um, onslaught when I'm done leveling this one up. I just want to make it slightly different, yet still v familiar and similar. As for Oleg. Uh, uh, Oleg saying in here you can play the game with a friend. Yes, you can play the game with a friend if you selected multiplayer. If your hero is on single player, it can never be played uh, with others unless someone makes a multiplayer mod, peer-to-peer uh, -peer multiplayer mod. Uh, if someone makes one such mod, okay, then um, then Grim Down style or Wobby based multiplayer could be doable, but someone needs to to code it. Someone needs to code such a mod to allow single player heroes to play together. I mean, with the Unreal Engine, um, there's a lot of possibilities for modding. This is one of the best things in the game. When they open up uh, the game for modding, um, there would be so many things that the, that the community can make. I mean, if someone feels like it, they can even make a PvP mod. Why not? If someone has the, the time and patience to balance uh, a game like this, for PvP, sure. Um, I'd much rather see the developers focus on PvE and giving us more endgame content variety in the PvP side, and then uh, leave the PvP to the modders. Um, I think as a modding project to someone who has great patience, uh, PvP would be a great challenge to any modder out there. Because this game right now you can do uh, 1, 2, 3 million damage when properly geared up with some builds. But you have 60, 70, 80, 90,000 HP. So you can see how PvP would be nightmare to balance. <laughs> it would be a nightmare to balance PvP.
Because it's gonna be just one shot fest. That's how it's gonna be. <laughs> Let's buy some potions. Did I get shoulders? Oh, I don't have shoulders. All right, let's buy a pair of shoulders. Just who I wanted to see. Oh, you'll be back. There's a new update. We need to restart the game and possibly Steam. All right. Um, fair enough for me. Uh, I'm at a good point where I can restart the game. Exit to desktop. I'm gonna restart Steam just in case. And uh, then restart Steam. And while the game is loading, I'm gonna check the patch notes. It's updating, so I can't launch it right now. Uh, in the meantime, let's check the patch notes. I'm gonna open Firefox and see if um, if we can see this there we go uh, I'm gonna share it with you while we're waiting for the patching actually it's already patched I can launch the game but while the game is launching we can see what patched today so general additional updates to ensure player uh, ensure single player save files retain progress Okay, how to find your walks, okay. Items and gear. Fixed enchanting recipes are not dropping at post-campaign levels. Nice. Monsters. Uh, reduce the netherwell champion damage. Reduce the behemoth's uh, ground missile boats damage. Uh, fixed an issue where open world bosses would regenerate full HP when the player moved away from the immediate area. Fixed sharpshooter here not always animating character grade. Increased fidelity of sharpshooter walk to run blend for controller stick okay by the way you might want to read this message from Max Schaefer that uh, uh, got released uh, earlier today or I think that was actually yesterday you might want to read this one from the CEO of extra games all right back to the um, back to the game nice little quick patch Let's do that sharpshooter. Here we are. Yeah, um, elect electrode sharpshooters are just so fun to play, honestly. It's one of my favorite combinations um, between class and subclass. Because the sharpshooter has a lot of skills, especially with the infectious shooter pistol. Um, there's a lot of uh, things that can trigger procs. And if you want a proc monster setup, this is a great one to to go for. I want to I want to check how useful uh, onslaught will be. How useful will onslaught be for such a build? So I'm gonna figure out um, this. Once I reach level eight, I can probably level onslaught. Actually, no, I'm gonna wait for level ten. Once I'm level ten, uh, I'm gonna level up reward and uh, remove my points from uh, tight grouping and. Uh, and targeted strikes and uh, get on swout uh, at least level 3 maybe the more the better though of course although with on swout you really need uh, you need shasta to make the to make the most out of a skill such as on swout you need shasta shasta can taunt when she taunts she guarantees you that the enemies would be next to her then you can unleash on Swout where Shasta is standing and then just enjoy the damage, uh, the damage falling from the sky on top of the enemies next to your wolf.
Okay, another notice uh, in case someone missed it. <laughs> Should I do this? Let's do it. Let's see what's in here. I really would need revolt because uh, I think I'm running out of ammo a lot when using consult. It's super easy to dump uh, the ammo quickly with that skill. try and group them up together over here CD can't in act one super painful There, there. I'm gonna go basic attack on this guy. Oh, another thing that uh, Onslaught could be good for is basic attack builds. Uh, I'm actually gonna test the basic attack version of the electrified sharpshooter this time around. So I'm gonna be trying to get either a mace or a bow so I can use shocking force. And see if I if I get a mace and shocking force that's gonna be such quick attack speed per second. Mace and shield. Mace and shield with shocking force would be super fun to try. I'm saving my skill points now for revolt but eventually I might try that one to see how it goes. But uh, while you're leveling up, uh, the easiest way to level up an electrified sharpshooter is chaotic strikes. Max this one out, as the sooner you max out this skill and this skill, the better it is for you. You can keep this one level. You don't have to keep it uh, at tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. You can keep this at one level while leveling up, but you can get this one to tier 3. Then get this one maxed out. Maybe max out uh, this one. And uh, you can keep something like targeted strikes level 1. It's still a good skill. Uh, Revolt level 1, still okay while leveling up. And just level 1 sacrifice to goose, or at least level 3 sacrifice to goose, this level 3. And that's super easy to level up, because you're going to be mostly using chaotic strikes, if you level up that way. I'm not going to do it now, because uh, I've just done it too many times. Too many times when, I w when I've leveled up um, uh, Electrode build, it was leveled up as a, as a Mayhem build, as a chaotic, uh, chaotic strikes Egg of Mayhem build. And the Egg of Mayhem is a great item. If you get it early in the game, um, it's just a fantastic way to have um, extra DPS on a Mayhem, as I call it. I call it Mayhem build because those skills, such as uh, Chaotic Strikes, uh, such as Sword Smash, uh, Venomous Maw, uh, Spinning Blade, uh, what else, Frost Buzz, those skills are the skills that trigger the Egg of Mayhem. That's why I call them Mayhem builds. But uh, basically they're just relic, uh, relic attack. I think they're classified as relic attack skills or used to be. So to those of you who know what Egg of Mayhem is, uh, I don't need to explain it, but to those of you who don't know, the Egg of Mayhem is an, this thing. An item 
that allows you, when you cast one of those skills that I mentioned, Sword Smash, Spinning Blade, Venomous Maw, Frost Blast, or Chaotic Strikes, when you cast one of them, you cast another random of those skills. So once I'm casting Chaotic Strikes, every time I cast it, it's casting a second one from the other four um, equivalent skills. And that's why it's super easy to level it up, because you, once you max it out, uh, there are multiple things that happen. First, you get 50% cost reduction, meaning you can spam this a lot. Second, it's very strong. Um, and those are the important things of, uh, of it being maxed out early on in the game. Third, it gets another, uh, it gets another, uh, another hit. Um, at the tier 1 bonus and each one of those hits multiple times that's why it's super easy to level up a build um, with that one it doesn't have to be sharpshooter it can be sharpshooter, it can be realm master, it can be forged uh, it can be disc mage chaotic strikes is super easy to level up with But it could be super boring as well, I mean, it could be super boring, but Chaotic Strikes in by itself is a super nice and fun build. To those of you who want that playstyle. And Klaus, uh, welcome back to you as well. You were not expecting Torchlight 3 stream today. Well, I was done with with uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Actually, in fact, today I made a video, which uh, I'm still waiting to get approved by Google. Uh, a video about Baldur's Gate 3 early access, uh, my first impressions. So since I finished the game yesterday, uh, my first playthrough, there's time for um, for some Torchlight 3 now. In fact, if anyone is around my level and wants to push the story together and doesn't mind doing it with my pace, which might be faster or slower than than uh, other people, if someone wants to push together, uh, I wouldn't mind uh, grouping up. Uh, we can add each other on Steam and uh, just play together. I will be experimenting a lot though uh, while leveling up. As usual, it's it's what I normally do. Actually, let me quickly check if that video got uh, approved by by Google already. Probably still pending. Oh, it is. Okay, I'm gonna publish it. There we go. I'm gonna publish. Okay, so on my YouTube channel now, I just published um, my Baldur's Gate Early Access Impressions. It's extended. It's extended because there was a lot of stuff to talk, so it's probably 30-something, 40 minutes. Um, I talked a lot uh, about certain things. But yeah, Baldur's Gate definitely was fun. Um, more fun than I expected. And um, there are still things I didn't do. There are still some fights and enemies I've never encountered. Uh, I was talking uh, today with my friends on Discord uh, and they are playing together in a multiplayer playthrough. And they fought some enemies I've never encountered uh, during my own playthrough. Actually, I'm gonna keep this shield for leveling up Realm Masters. Squeezed a little bit more damage. <laughs> okay. I'm saving some items for leveling up outs. If I think an item is worth saving for when leveling other heroes on the account, I will put it in my storage.
I'm going to use some respectacles. Uh, once I reach level 10, I'm gonna need to use some respectacles. Hopefully I've got at least two respectacles by then. It all depends on my work. Alright, there we go. How am I doing with the levels? I'm level 8, they're level, they're level 6. And that's the good thing about Ridiculous. On Ridiculous, you don't get more XP, but you really do. You don't directly get more XP, but there's more champions. And champions give uh, good amounts of XP. So more champions equals more fame, which equals more XP. So even though the, the harder difficulties don't directly give you plus percent XP, you still get it. You still get it because you're killing more champions and you still um, get a lot more fame, you actually do get more fame playing on Ridiculous from killing a champion. Uh, I think you get three times uh, more, I'm not sure about the exact numbers, but I think you get exactly three times more fame on Ridiculous compared to Practice. So if on Practice I get 50 for a, for a green enemy, on Ridiculous the same enemy would give me 150. So if this one on practice gives me 25, um, I think on, on Ridiculous it should be 75 for uh, those enemies when you heal the, kill the whole pack and they drop the, the fame. So that's something the game doesn't tell you. The fame increase is invisible to the player and I've been asking for the developers to add something on the character creation when you select the difficulty, to click on the difficulty and open small pop-up or something that has all the changes. All the changes, not just the movement speed, the, the damage and the gear work bonus and potion work, but other things such as the hidden um, invisible changes. Uh, more transparency is great, I wouldn't mind uh, having a button to click. I hope you're hearing what I'm hearing. The voiceover is ridiculously fucking low. I'm still wondering why they didn't increase the voiceover volumes. I'm just gonna skip this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch a cutscene with I can't hear it. I have to increase my headset from ten to forty. And with forty I'm barely go I'm gonna go deaf to be able to hear this. And they need a separate slider in the settings. They need a separate slider for voiceover or cutscene or cinematic volume. Right now they only have master in music. And you see my music is maxed out, my master is here. And if I increase my master, the sound effects would be so deafeningly loud. Um, I think they really need to add a separate slider or just in, in general increase the volume uh, of the voiceover in those cinematics. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has noticed whenever there are cinematics in this game you can barely hear what they're talking about unless you increase the the headset but if I play with an increased headset volume uh, I'm, I'm gonna go deaf from all the effect sounds so that's something I don't know why they haven't noticed the sound in their videos and trailers is amazing but uh, when it comes to this, something needs to be done about it. Because right now, I, I really, I really don't know what what I need to do to be able to hear without uh, going deaf from the sound effects. 
So either reduce uh, either reduce everything else's volume and keep the cinematics to the same one. And it would be good to do this change before the game really launches. You've got two more days. With, within those two more days, if they just do this little change of increasing the volume uh, by 50% or by 60-70% of the cinematics, it would be uh, an amazing, uh, amazing quality of life for everyone who is um, following the story while leveling up. I normally keep my headset at 10. Not 10%, uh, there are just some numbers. I don't know how far it goes. Um, but I keep it at 10. Or 12. Right now it's 14, now it's 12. So in order to hear this cinematic, I need to go to like 40 or 36 at least. Which is three times as much. So maybe double the volume of those cutscenes without increasing everything else, just the cutscenes. And that should probably do the trick. Uh, maybe 250% of the current sound. Uh, I hope I'm not the only one that's noticing this. And by the way, if you have any other questions regarding uh, any class, any build, feel free to ask them. Uh, I'm, I'm open to to all sorts of question Torchlight 3 related. And Oleg, uh, by the way, you were asking earlier who I will start on release. I'm already starting. This is it. The game, there's no more wiping. There's no more wipes. Uh, I'm not gonna lose this progress. So everyone who got early access uh, to the game Everyone who got early access to the game can play since uh, since the 6th of October, since the final launch, which was on Tuesday. So even though next Tuesday the game is launching officially, it's already officially launched for Steam early access uh, adopters. I was planning on starting this one, uh, I was planning on starting this here on Tuesday, but since uh, the Baldur's Gate playthrough, kind of, uh, I ended up uh, finishing it uh, yesterday, I decided to just start, uh, start this Torchlight 3 playthrough early. Probably by Tuesday I would be done with this one and I can start a new one then. We'll see. Typhoon uh, TC is back. Uh, welcome back, Typhoon. Um, Invix, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but um, I N V V X X. Um, yeah, no more wipes. Uh, definitely, definitely nice. And yeah, hi to you as well. Welcome to everyone who's new in my channel. Again, feel free to ask questions, and if you want to play together. Don't be afraid to ask. I can go on any difficulty. I don't I don't insist on playing on ridiculous. So if you don't want to play on ridiculous, I can always switch my difficulty. If you want to push together. Just keep in mind my my pacing might be a little bit um, different um, than yours. It could be slower than yours, it could be faster than yours. Block, block. Okay, I'm gonna go to my fort now. You can't cast that here. These are perfect. Panic called me a fool, but I knew you'd succeed. How did that old drunk go? I'm gonna go to my fort quickly and uh, do some changes. I'm gonna respect a little. Just two points. I'm gonna remove targeted strikes and tight grouping and stick to onslaught.
Because uh, for fun, I just want to test Onslaught, which used to be the, the weakest of the t sharpshooter skills. Um, now it's not that bad. It, it could still be kind of weaker than targeted strikes and uh, explosive arrow and uh, tight grouping, but it's not that bad. Sorry, I muted myself for a sip of tea. So I need to place my work tree. Work tree. You have completed a Actually, let's do something. There we go, fresh start. Let's do this quickly. I'm just gonna put the essentials. I'm gonna s keep it simple, essentials only. And eventually, sometime later, I'm gonna worry about the other stuff. So for now, let's keep it clean. Pet shelter, uh, what else? Uh, functional, I'm gonna need some functional stuff. I'm gonna need a training dummy. I'm gonna need um, those things. I'm gonna randomly place them and uh, worry about uh, the fourth stuff later. I don't wanna bore you with Ford stuff. Not everyone likes Ford stuff, so I'm just gonna quickly just do the essential stuff. Uh, I need Enchanter's Outer. Enchanter's Outer. Maybe I haven't unlocked it yet. Alright. Uh, it's gonna come later. And I need a Respectacle. Like this. And... Okay, saving the next skill point, and with the next skill point uh, and uh, two skill points from level 10, I'm gonna level up. Um, I'm going to level up three points into reward and maybe one point into lightning barrier. Oh no, one point into sacrifice to goose. More, imp more important than lightning barrier. What's my quest now? Fire belly village. Oh, I forgot to put items in my inventory. By the way, if you use scrolls of wife bound, always keep a backup weapon or uh, or armor or whatever. If you're wife binding something, uh, keep a backup. You don't want to find yourself weaponless or armorless, especially weaponless. I mean, with one without one piece of armor, you can probably survive somehow. Uh, but if you end up not having a weapon, you might have a bad time. I really hope they rework this um, this wife bound system again. Because if you're not playing hardcore, you're not benefiting that much from this system. It's just I don't know. I, I don't like permanently losing items. I'd much rather have a durability system and be able to just temporarily lose this item but be able to repair it later um, after investing some sort of resource
And yeah, Oleg, no more wipes. The final wipe was the 6th of October. So with the with the patch on the 6th of October, everything was wiped. So if you start playing now, uh, you're not going to lose your progress. Uh, my current electrode sharpshooter, um, you can just go on my website, here builds uh, on strukquub.xyz. You, you can look for electrified sharpshooter. The only difference I will do now to the electrified build is I will go for onslaught instead of targeted strikes. So the only difference between the electrified sharpshooter and this build would be instead of targeted strikes I will be using onslaught. I will experiment and probably put some shocking force into the build and play with basic attacks as well. Um, but, um, but in the end this is probably going to be very similar to the electrified. So electrified uh, is, is the, sh the build I want this to end up uh, looking like. I'm still going to keep it slightly different uh, just, uh, just for the sake of it not being uh, boring playing the same build over and over. So that's why I'm going to experiment with Onslaught. Onslaught would be good on a proc monster build like the Electrified one. Um, that's why I'm testing it now. I think Onslaught goes well with basic attacks because you might have some time to feel while the Onslaught is going. So I'm gonna try and uh, get myself a good bow or a good mace. And since it will be squishy, probably a bow would be the better option. And... Um, Cyrus Tech 2323, hi there to you as well. Welcome to the Struck Club, nice uh, seeing you here. I need potions. Before I die, uh, I'm probably better off going to replenish my potions. Um, just grind and get legendary bundles. The best way to, to get gear is uh, grinding and getting those legendary gear bundles. You're not gonna find a uh, better way. Uh, unless they change the way uh, farming is done, but for now uh, we don't know about upcoming changes to this. So the best way to, to get gear, as I said earlier, is farming infamous unique maps in the Fazir's dungeon. The map needs to be at the same time infamous and uniques. If you can't get infamous uniques, just get uh, uniques. That's good enough. Um, okay, let's try and get better gauntlets. Oh, look at my work. <laughs> Three in a row white titans.
but yeah the game war is fine when you're wagging behind on your items if you're wagging behind on your items it's fine to spend uh, a little bit of gold on the game war um, but it's not going to be your main source of gear in fact uh, most of the gear mm, you get there would be kind of bad you can get good blue items but uh, getting legendary items from the game war is not going to be easy Alright, there's some more over there. Where is my... oh, my quest is behind. As for the gear, um, for the gear that you would want to use for an electrified build, chance to shock uh, is definitely a good thing if you can't get chance to shock in a gear you really need to put points into shocking display if you can't get chance to shock because no chance to shock means no proking uh, of lightning strike so keep that in mind um, chance to shock somewhere would help uh, it's not a must have but it really helps to to get uh, the most out of the build you want a lot of flat damages um, you want to get uh, a decent amount of crit chance and crit damage as well. Damage to... Damage to targeted uh, strike if you're using targeted strike, to, to onslaught if you're using onslaught, to tight grouping if you're using tight grouping. Uh, whatever main skill you decide to choose as your damage, damage to that skill is good. Damage to precision skills is even better. Um, but uh, I'm not sure whether damage to precision skills um, gives you less. Um, it used to give you exactly the same amount, but I think they made some changes. And I think right now damage to precision skills will probably give you less than damage to targeted strikes. So a priority would be on the one that gives you the bigger number. I think damage to a certain skill group should be lower than the damage uh, of that skill alone. So if they make the skills um, give more damage than the group of skills on the affix, it would be worth it. For example, if if uh, damage to if damage to what's it called to pre precision skills is 15%, I think damage to targeted strikes needs to be 20 or 17.5, something like that. If you get 10% damage to precision skills, maybe 15% should be the damage to targeted strikes. Uh, just to make it uh, kind of better. Because you know, you're only boosting one skill, but that skill is getting boosted um, by uh, a bigger number. And the same should go for every class. Damage to conductor, damage to flamethrower car, for example. Comparison. See this bow, let me see if it's gonna be stronger, it's not gonna be stronger. If this one had extra flat damage I would have chosen to, to use it. Other good stats to look for would be... Uh, extra shock bolts. Extra bolts fired on shock is definitely uh, a nice thing to look for. 
Uh, Relic energy cost, amazing uh, thing to look for. Relic energy cost reduction. And uh, Relic energy generation, amazing thing uh, to look for on most builds. Um, not just uh, the one I was talking about. Ammo generation, it's not a must have uh, item, so um, it's a good one though, it's definitely a good one. For builds that are spamming uh, the precision skills more often, it is uh, worth it. Oh, damn, I ran out of potions again. I'm running out of potions very quickly. Zero potion life, it's not easy. Again, uh, one of the things I really detest in the game, in my guts I detest the potion system. It's just super bad outdated potion system from 20 years ago. Um, I would much rather have a system where you just have potion skills, uh, healing skills instead of potions, healing skills, and then you just choose the healing skill you want, choose one and just switch it. When you're fighting enemies that shock you, use the shocking uh, uh, cure potion or shocking cure skill um, and to just to remove the damn potion drop from the drop tables of enemies and just keep it on a cooldown and all you need to manage is a cooldown. You don't have to worry about buying potions and wasting time going to the city like now to buy potions. You don't have to dilute the wood pool, the affix pool with uh, potion work. Potion work is such a bad stat. Um, this system just needs to go back to 2020 uh, or go <laughs> forward into 2020 and, uh, and uh, get with the times. I don't know a single game where a potion system where the potions drop um, that feels great to play in that potion system. Even in Diablo 2, the potion system was kind of um, imbalanced. Getting uh, big rejuvenating potions was so, so overpowered there. You could just spam those rejuvenating potions. <laughs> uh, yeah. If, for example, they make a different potion or healing skills, whatever they want to call them, and let us unwalk them uh, with the story as we go through and uh, finish certain quests, starting with the basic one, this one, and then having uh, other ones unwalk as we go, as we progress the story, uh, it's going to be nice. And just switch it uh, to the one you want, based on the content you're doing. And yeah, Andreas uh, Lexel, the game is released now. This is the 1.0 uh, week, one week early start. If you are a Steam Early Access player, which means if you bought the game before Tuesday, this uh, next Tuesday, the 13th, uh, you can play one week early. So people were able to play from the 6th without any wipes. The final wipe was on the 6th of uh, October, last Tuesday. Uh, so, if you were Steam Early Access, and you can still be Steam Early Access player, I mean, you're getting the game for $10 less on Steam. On PlayStation and Xbox, it's launching uh, next Tuesday, the 13th. But if you want to get the, the game on Steam, you can save yourself 10 bucks or 10 euro, because the price is going up. On the 13th, the price is going up. From 29 uh, to 99, or for 29.90, it's going to 39.90, or whatever the price is. So 10, 
10 euro or 10 bucks more. I'm not sure about other regions, but uh, I'm pretty sure about the, the USD and the euro price of the game. And if you get it now, you can play it on Steam without wipes. The final wipe has already commenced. And there's single player already. You can already play single player. But uh, you cannot play multiplayer with single player heroes. Uh, it's completely separate. Separate account progression, separate uh, characters. So your hero quests and your account quests uh, and your character swaps will be different um, whether you play on single player or multiplayer. But there will be mod support, so maybe there already is mod support for single player, I'm not sure how, how things with modding are. I, I need to ask the, uh, the devs later uh, when I have time. Because I'm gonna make a video, I'm gonna make a YouTube video where I'm explaining a little bit how modding uh, is done. But I guess I'm gonna wait for more official information from the devs so that um, I can try and make a YouTube video for those interested in modding the game. Uh, what to do to get themselves started. I think we just need to wait for the 13th for the official launch and they're probably gonna post something on Steam explaining uh, when and how modding will be accessible to those who want to dig into the fun side of modding uh, games like Torchlight 3. I can't wait for someone to make a mod where you can instantly level up to level 60 and um, and buy every item for zero gold. I will be using such a mod and pl making builds because it's gonna save me uh, a lot of time. If someone makes a single player mod that you can insta get to max level and insta get every item you want, I would use that for sandbox or for a sandbox to test builds, not to play, just to test builds. Uh, and make build videos without wasting time on leveling up every build uh, for like 2-3 um, days. Because um, normally it takes me 2-3 days of streaming, several hours a day, to level up and gear up a build before I think the build is ready. And for a content creator, um, from a content creator's point of view, such a mod would be amazing um, to test stuff. So if someone makes such a mod, uh, I would play it uh, for testing purposes. If I knew how, I would make it myself. <laughs> Honestly, if I knew how, I would uh, pop up the Unreal Engine and try and make it myself, but I definitely am not a developer, so... won't be able to. But I've already done a lot of testing, so most of the things, most of the things I kind of know how they would end up. Even before I start leveling a build, I kind of know how it would end up. Because I've tested so many things, um, and yeah, I try to keep up with the patch notes. Um, I'm probably gonna make a, a video about the, about the 1.0 update when the patch on the 13th lands. Yeah, I'm gonna get wrecked here. Teleporting spider, this is so dangerous as an enemy. I'm one shot away from dying. And he can teleport to me any moment. Okay, I'm gonna go buy potions. See, that's what I'm talking about. This potion system, I, I keep running out of potions and I keep needing to go to the city to buy potions and I can't get the pet to buy them for me. And even if I could, it would take him some time. 
to bring those potions to me. And now I don't even have money to buy the potions I need. Worst part of the game, this potion system. There are so many good things. So many fun things, especially the build variety. One of the best things of the game is the um, immense amount of build variety. Okay, let's buy some more potions. But the potion system feels like a 20 year old uh, system. I really like the potion system in Warhammer Chaos Bane. Speaking of Warhammer Chaos Bane, it's getting a new hero, a Witch Hunter. Warhammer Chaos Bane on the 19th of November is releasing for um, for Xbox uh, Xbox Series X and I'm assuming for, play for PlayStation 5 uh, something called the Slayer Edition. And the Slayer Edition in Warhammer Chaos Bane will have a new class Witch Hunter. Um, which leads me to believe that they're probably going to make a new DLC on Steam uh, that would contain the Witch Hunter. So may maybe that's what they were working on, um, the Witch Hunter uh, new character. Which is fine, but uh, Warhammer Chaos Bane's biggest problem right now is the the boring, uh, stale endgame. It's, it's so similar. All different types of endgame are like playing the same type of endgame just with a different name swapped on it. And the Tower of Chaos is different. The Tower of Chaos uh, is different but it's very unrewarding and people just uh, didn't like it as much as uh, they were probably hoping for. So we'll see whether the endgame in Warhammer Chaos Bane will be getting some sort of improvements with this update. I'm actually excited that there's a new hero. I was not expecting a new hero. I thought that uh, their attention has only been going towards developing uh, um, a way to port Warhammer Chaos Bane um, to the new console generations. I did not expect to see a new hero and uh, uh, Witch Hunter was actually what I was asking for since day one. Since day one I was asking for a Witch Hunter um, in Chaos Bane and it's nice to see that uh, they're finally ready to deliver. And this one will be better for now, maybe. How am I doing with the potions? Four potions, that should be enough. Wow, my pet uh, insta gift. Oh nice, the shrines are back. Shrines in both rooms, such a nice thing. I love having shrines in both rooms. I was worried they've removed all of them.
Come on, come on, Skittles. Okay. Maybe it's time to get rid of this electric damage. I'm losing some DPS, but I need that extra defense. No, no, no. Okay, uh, moving on with the quests. Uh, is White Vault's turn now? Is it? I think. Oh no, maybe now it's the mm, the Frag Master, um, and then was White Vault and Gwen. Uh, welcome back, Gwen, uh, to you. And the Disc Mage, uh, the Disc Mage and Sharpshooter, by the way, Andreas, they are still silly strong, but uh, Realm Master is also super strong uh, with uh, certain train builds uh, and with certain slammer builds. The Forged is still uh, kind of the weakest of them all, especially ranged Forged. But the Forged, uh, the developers are aware that the, f the Forged needs some changes, and they will be doing some changes to the Forged. Um, after the 13th uh, and the official launch, they will be revisiting the Forged. Uh, and um, yeah, there will be some changes there. Uh, there will be some major changes, probably the same way with the Disc Mage. And the Disc Mage got a very nice rework and rebalance. So the Disc Mage now is closer to Sharpshooter as damage. Uh, from the get-go because the disc mage really needed specific items and it really needed to have uh, its uh, dark and light buff active to do a lot of damage with the with the celestial gauntlets and the three piece set bonus but right now even without the celestial gauntlets uh, every single disc mage skill except um, two has been buffed up um, dark spears has been slightly nerfed um, Netherim, uh, net spirit well, spirit well has not been changed. Every other skill has been buffed up. Um, the damage you can do with the celestial gauntlets during harmonic form is less, but the damage you can do without harmonic form, uh, and harmonic form is by the way the new way the disc mage works. When you get light, the when you get the light bar up, it stays there until you get the dark buff and vice versa. Once you get both buffs, visually you become like a spectral uh, skin um, and, um, and you get uh, harmonic form and it starts draining your bar. So this is kind of a new thing. And harmonic form is great. I think it's uh, one of the best updates, the best things they've done to Disc Mage. So overall you get a little bit of a nerf, like 100% damage is being lost. But every skill got buffed up. So while leveling up uh, in the first few levels, before you get good gear, the Disc Mage would feel a little bit easier than before. And uh, you get extra skill points. Uh, you used to have 60 skill points, you get 70. Yes, uh, I do agree that uh, respecting needs to be a little bit less restrictive, but uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm not the only one I know. Uh, I know many people want uh, respecting to be a little bit easier and, uh, and to be more available to players, especially in the early levels when people are making mistakes. I think you should be able to respect freely until level 20 or 30. I think they should uh, make such a system where until level 20 or 30 the skill points allocation is not permanent and you should be able to freely change it and once you maybe start uh, reaching level 30 or 20 or 25 it should become permanent and uh, and start using the respectacle system. Uh, I would love to see something like that implemented for new players uh, as they're 
as they're leveling and making mistakes, but I also wouldn't mind if it remains the way it is. I mean, even if it remains the way it is, it's not that terrible. Because uh, you can get a ton of respectacles in the high levels. Just not while leveling up, just not in the early levels. Which, uh, unfortunately, is exactly when people need to respect a uh, what. Um, because they keep making uh, errors. If, if you're a new player and you've not played as much as, as someone who has played since uh, Alpha or Beta or Early Access, you're not gonna know what you want to do. And yeah, there's always watching videos and streams, but it's not the same. Watching a video or a stream is not gonna give you the same feeling uh, you would get by playing uh, a certain skill yourself and checking how much damage that certain skill does um, compared to another one and whether you like the mechanic of that skill. So I can agree there. Uh, if you get one free respect, that's gonna be fine. Uh, that's also not bad. If, if the game gives you one free respect um, before a certain level has been reached. I wouldn't mind getting one free respect, actually, one free respect um, would be more than enough. So if you make mistake, then make a few more and then respect. Uh, <laughs> experiment <laughs> and then respect. But uh, when it comes to respecting, some people think there shouldn't be any type of respecting. Uh, some very old school gamers, some people who like it hard. Um, there's people who, who want it the way it is and there's people who want a full respect. And there's people who want uh, respect as easy as Diablo 3 and Warhammer Chaos Bane. So... As long as there, respect, there is some sort of respecting, I'm fine. Of course, um, if they drop uh, respectacles more often, I wouldn't mind it. Um, I wouldn't mind getting respectacles more often. But when you reach the end game, it's super easy to farm respectacles. Especially on Ridiculous. On Ridiculous... Um, you can get, uh, as I said earlier, between 20 and 35 contract levels, which translates in two uh, to three and, and a half respectacles per map. Uh, if you're doing uh, infamous unique maps, because every nine levels you get one respectacle point, every nine contract levels. So once you, once you start farming contract levels and fame, you're gonna see how easy and quick it is to get respectacles. At one point you're gonna have too many respectacles and nothing to do with them other than test different builds uh, and uh, just mess around. I'm stuck, I can't move. Okay, I, I'm not sure what happened, but for a moment I couldn't move at all. And I didn't have immobilize on me. Okay, I'm already encountering some, some trouble. Um, this boss is uh, just a bullet sponge. It's just taking unnecessarily long to kill him. And I've got good gear. I've got super good gear damage-wise for my level. So it's already kind of swaggish. Uh, and I'm level 10, he's level 9. So it shouldn't be taking this long to kill this enemy. They still haven't gotten the perfect balance of time to kill. Um, there's always been problems with ridiculous mode and time to kill. Um, for certain enemies. Wait, what server am I playing on? Am I on Europe? I am on Europe West, okay, weird. 
68 pink. My pink is 68. Okay, it's not too bad, but uh, normally I have like 40 pink, now it's 68. Not sure what happened. Um, in the past couple of months, uh, my ping with the with the US uh, with uh, with the Euro server has been kind of bad. From 40, it went to like 60, so 50% increase in my ping. It's not uh, a big number. 60 is still not a bad number. At least for a game like this one, for a shooter, then things are different. Not a fan of chance to knock back. Uh, it's probably because there's uh, we're overloading the servers in the in the um, what's it called uh, the um, the the stress test day the stress test day on the sixth. Um, there weren't as many people logged in as um, as right now. In fact, I can even show you numbers. Instead of telling you numbers, I can show you. I'm gonna go to Steam charts, and you can see for yourself what I'm talking about. So let's look at the sixth of October. Until from the sixth until the seventh, the the game capped at uh, 1,200 people during the test stress test day. And oops, uh, what just happened now? And today we are reaching uh, a high of 1,400. Of course, the all-time peak is uh, 5,600, which was um, June when the game started early access. So it's nowhere near those numbers, and they already got uh, got the servers working with such numbers back then. But yeah, all right, enough of this. Uh, let me just remove this one. And it's sad that uh, oh, most of the most of the bad reviews this game got were during the early access phase. Uh, review bombing in early access is such a big problem for games. Because this game is in a much better state than it used to be in early access, and it doesn't deserve the Steam rating uh, it it has right now. Um, it's sad to see such a rating, but that's how it is. I think uh, the the Steam really needs to separate the the rating to have a separate system for early access and when the game exits early access to show you two different numbers early access percentages and post launch percentages so on the 13th when the game launches it would have been nice to to erase this number and keep it on the site uh, and so you can see what's happening and it's actually gonna be even better seeing low, low numbers in early access and high percentage numbers um, after the game launched, it means the developers know what they're doing, and that they n they know to fix things. They're not uh, they're not uh, resting all day. Uh, so in games that uh, got bad scores in early access, but got better scores uh, post launch, it's actually a good sign, uh, not the other way around. I still think the the way Steam reviews uh, with early access work uh, is kind of uh, not great and needs changes. Okay, uh, let's go. And let's go continue my quest. The achievements getting erased, uh, it's fine. Uh, I don't really care if they erase the achievements or not. If they did, I wouldn't QQ. Um, but um, the ratings, uh, they can't erase the ratings. It's completely Steam. Steam is the, the company that handles those things. So... 
if they raise the ratings it would look bad unless team changes its own system to separate uh, clearly it's still separating early reviews from um, recent reviews you still see the more recent reviews and uh, uh, you just don't see the number properly and clearly you don't see a separation between early access and, uh, and trio um, launched games but it would be nice to have um, clear indication early access numbers and post launch numbers but Steam doesn't really care about this I think uh, see if this game launches on a platform like good old games um, and good old games has some sort of rating system I really am not a good old games user so I don't know um, how things are there um, if people play it now uh, in its current state I'm pretty sure the reviews would look much better than the Steam ones probably when it starts on Xbox and PlayStation it's gonna get um, better reviews than Steam there oh wow 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 I have no potions again my eternal problem the potion system fifty percent of the game achievements are there for me because I got them <laughs> from you <laughs> nice uh, uh, and half one gamer f says for how for sharpshooter plus coat uh, which build is better uh, you tried my scatter shot build but the damage at level 35 which one suggest to try always on code relic please tell me okay um, a build for the code heart relic any skill is good you can use targeted strikes you can use tight grouping you can use onslaught and you can use explosive arrow if you don't like charging scatter shot just don't use scatter shot scatter shot was there just uh, just because I wanted to use a skill that I haven't used much and just because scatter shot and frost blast looks cool together but you can replace scatter shot if you don't like it and use uh, targeted strikes tight grouping onslaught or explosive arrow you're probably noticing I'm not even mentioning heart seeker because heart seeker is not a spam skill it has an 8 seconds cooldown uh, and so does uh, scatter shot later uh, when you get uh, when you get the 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 wingspan when you get the wingspan rifle uh, scatter shot has a cooldown as well right now it's at one second it gets two seconds cooldown but it gets double damage so charging uh, scatter shot uh, with the wingspan double damage double cooldown is definitely okay but if you want something more spammy and if you don't like uh, if you don't like charging the same skill over and over again can uh, you can just avoid scatter shot and just pick one of the other more spammy skills they're all fine they've kind of rebalanced them targeted strikes probably still seems like the most OP one but uh, explosive arrow also had some changes and it uh, now travels the projectile travels a little bit better so you might want to consider um, using that one too if it's code uh, you don't have a clear synergy there isn't one clear synergy with the cold heart the cold heart is the most underpowered relic believe me uh, every other relic would give you better dps or survivability than the cold heart so the only thing that the cold heart would give you better than the other relics is crowd control you get more crowd control with cold heart and that's uh, pretty much it um, unless they change certain things in regards to how they work um, on paper the cold heart gives you the best survivability but that's on paper I've I've tested uh, cold heart versus uh, versus Bud drinker and Bud drinker is the actual better uh, relic for survivability because on paper uh, every 35 seconds you can ignore one hit but that only works if you're not getting hit all the time if you're not taking damage over time all the time um, and on ridiculous if you consider ice shield um, 
that's three times every every 20 seconds you get three times to block a single source of damage so three sources of damage every 20 seconds with ice shield and if you get the cooldown reduction for ice uh, shield um, you can probably get it to every 18 seconds that's okay uh, and then you can consider things like uh, frost armor or frost skin Frost skin gives you every 35 seconds another source of damage blocked, but again, this only looks good on paper. In actuality, you will get hit a lot more than that, and you will be taking damage. Even if you stacked 40% block chance and 40% evasion, uh, and stack frost skin uh, and ice shield all the time, you're still gonna have some problems surviving at certain uh, high level Fazir dungeon stages. Whereas with the, uh, with things like, uh, what's it called, uh, with the Blood Drinker's uh, Living Barrier, you get 50% damage reduction for a few seconds. And you get healing of 20% HP per second for those seconds. And then you get healing with uh, Blood Seeker, and then you can get healing with Drain. So, and then you can get uh, another uh, source of healing and damage reduction from things like um, Body Chalice. So, the Blood Drinker is the better one for survivability. And for damage, uh, it would be uh, Electrode and Flaming Destroyer. They are, they are better. Flaming Destroyer is very good for direct damage. Relic uh, stuff, um, Electrode is very good for proc monsters, um, Flaming Destroyer is good for proc monsters but not very good, so not as good as the Electrode but still decent. Uh, and the Electrode is also very good for um, for direct damage with certain skills, so uh, Electrode is definitely a good Relic and so is the Flaming Destroyer for damage. but. But uh, you will be a little bit squishier, a little bit squishier with those relics. And the poison relic um, can be nice um, for survivability too, because it gives you it gives you 50% defense from poison nova, uh, and it gives you 50% defense I think from uh, miasma. Um, but it's more of a summoner build uh, relic. You can still make a non-summoner build on the on the bane, but um, but if you're making a non-summoner build, you might as well just pick a different relic because most skills there are summon centric. Spectral spider summon, um, spider links summon. Um, Arachnid Assault eventually gets a summon, Miasma gets summons, Puppet Master summon based, the basic attack makes summons. So it, it's nice to know that every every relic is for a specific playstyle. If you don't want, want that playstyle, you have to change the relic. And the Cold Heart is the most underpowered because, well, it's supposed to be for crowd control, but the crowd control of that relic is okay, it's good, but it's not great. The damage of um, the relic, it's okay, but it's not great. Uh, the survivability, it's okay, but it's not great. So it's like mediocre all round. It's like a, a jack of all trades kind of relic. It gives you some crowd control that's better than the other relics. Uh, it gives you some some survivability but not as much as a uh, blood drinker and it gives you some damage but not as much as electrode or um, or a flaming destroyer so it's it's the most underpowered uh, one right now but they're gonna change certain things um, some of the developers already said that they know that certain things don't feel right in the code heart in particular the the combo um, the combo uh, I can't show you now, but the, the breaking point and frost skin combo. One of the two skills needs a change. Whether they increase uh, something with breaking point and make it more worth it for something that triggers only once every 35 seconds, excluding uh, ice shield procs. Um, 
they either gonna increase this one or or they should uh, do something with bre uh, with frost skin but i think those skills are the ones that need to change the rest are fine uh once they fix the bug there's currently a bug uh with crit chance crit chance is capped at 40 percent and uh, there's things like ice storm that are supposed to give you 100% crit chance to frozen enemies while ice storm is a uh, snowstorm not ice storm while snowstorm is active there's also the, the crit chance shrine which supposedly um, gives you 100% crit chance but it doesn't you're gonna see that with the crit chance shrine you're still only at 40% crit chance and um, this bug happened once they made a crit chance limit of 40 so they're figuring out the ways to bypass this with certain things so code heart would be very very good for damage once they fix this once you can guarantee yourself 100 percent crit chance to frozen enemies just think of uh, think of the possibilities you can just stack 300 percent crit uh, damage um, you can ignore crit chance from gear uh, and get more defenses or more movement speed or more block chance and things like that from the pet aura as well you can you can ignore the pet aura buff uh, for crit chance and use the one uh, with defense or movement speed or block chance so I can't wait uh, for some of the broken things to get fixed some of the trickier trickier things um, that are still broken the good thing about the game is there aren't that many broken things you're not gonna see too many things uh, it's very polished for a for a game to launch i think it's in a good shape and i ran out of potions again uh, my bane my bane potions in this game are just making my head hurt when leveling up at least the loading times uh, are okay I'm co constantly struggling with the potions. Constantly. Let's see. Uh, Lizard Wizard says breaking point should activate off of more things. Like if you successfully block or evade, then next time you're hit, it goes off. Uh, I just think they need to reduce the cooldown of. Um, a frost skin or 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 yeah make it uh, make it activate off of other things as well that would be fine if they make it activate off of other things it's not gonna be bad or make the damage higher so but still I'd much rather have lower damage but uh, proc more often rather than high damage or high HP but uh, proc every 35 seconds so I, I'd rather have uh, them change frost skin uh, to to just have like 15-20 seconds cooldown, maybe 10 even. On paper it looks like an overpowered skill, but believe me, I've played long enough on various builds to tell you it's not that much because you're constantly taking hits and you're not relying on this ignored damage too much. In fact, I'm not even using it for the ignored damage. I'm using it mostly for the for the proc for the extra freeze i just uh, want that freezing to have more sources of freezing i think synergizing more freezes from the frost novas with uh, the snowstorm tier 3 bonus would be the best way to play uh, the relic eventually if they make those uh, things proc more often if you can uh, guarantee yourself freezing enemies every 10 seconds uh, or every 15 seconds it's gonna be amazing every 15 seconds you take a hit and you freeze right now you're taking damage uh, all the time you're taking hits all the time and on ridiculous uh, when you when you gear up you're gonna be stacking a ton of damage reduction you're gonna be stacking a lot of defenses and 
every 35 seconds is just uh, it's too much too much of a cooldown for uh, frost skin maybe on paper it looks like a good thing but uh, i've done the actual testing the field work and i can tell you it just doesn't feel right and i've tested it on on all four heroes all four classes i've tested playing uh, cold hard builds with And melee builds would definitely benefit from something like that because melee builds are right there in the action and uh, Frost Novas would be hitting the enemies because you're in melee range. For ranged heroes uh, it might be a little bit different and you might wanna um, you might wanna consider not investing into this but it's still okay. What else uh, I've missed I'm gonna check some uh, messages. Uh, how mind gamer respect scatter shot and out the point targeted strikes, but why you take the siesta summon? Oh, the uh, shasta is a must-have skill. If there's one skill I would say you should keep on every single build is the royal shasta. Even if you don't use it in your skill bar, no, actually you have to use it in the skill bar. Uh, I'm gonna explain why. This gives you 50% extra damage to taunted enemies. And it taunts enemies. So not only is it making uh, your life easier by taunting the enemies, uh, making the enemies hit Shasta instead of you, but it also makes taunted enemies take 50% more damage. You only need it at tier 2. So you can you can spend 4 points plus 2 from the set uh, and you're done. You don't need to take it to tier 3. So every single sharpshooter build needs a royal Shasta. Otherwise, you're losing a lot of DPS. 50% increased damage to taunted enemies, Shasta taunting the enemies. It's just too good to miss out on. The same goes for Sacrifice of Ghouls. Uh, tier 1 Sacrifice of Ghouls uh, makes this vulnerability to 30%. So you can stack this 30% vulnerability with this 50% increased damage. That's 80% increased damage to enemies who are vulnerable and taunted. So I hope this clarifies why Royal Shasta exists in every single one of my sharpshooter builds. It's just, um, it just not worth it removing uh, the skill. It keeps the enemies away from you and um, some of them would be focusing the summon and it makes those taunted enemies take more damage. I mean, it's, uh, it's double combo of usefulness. And on Cold Heart, I've put 6 points in the Relic Ultimate. Um, you might want to invest into... Oh, Galactic Nail, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the Star Club. You might want to invest into uh, damage to Relic skills from Onslaught and you might want to max this one, uh, the, the Cold Heart. Uh, just a moment. Uh, keep in mind, if you're watching my Sharp uh, Scatter Shot build, Scatter Shot has not been... Um, the Scatter Shot build has not been reworked. It's the only one that doesn't have the extra 10 skill points. So the skill points you're gonna see on my on my scatter shot build uh, are different than than what I would suggest. Uh, I'm gonna rework it tonight. I promise you tonight I will rework the screenshots and update them on my website. Every other of my 22 builds that have been made uh, after they added the relic subclass uh, are different. I'm gonna quickly show you some screenshots. Uh, of the Cold Heart Relic from the other uh, uh, from the other Cold Heart build. So just a moment. Uh, Sharpie builds. Um, Wingspan Scatter Shot 2. And I'm gonna show you the upgraded ones of... Um, this is my summoner. The, s the Scatter Shot Summoner. Not the Scatter Shot regular, the Scatter Shot Summoner. And let me make sure you're seeing the screenshot. You are. So this is one screenshot. I've got multiple. I've got six ones. So that's one version. Um, now there is another version here. So one version, second version, third version. Uh, actually, that's empty. This version. 
This is if you want a summoner. Uh, if you don't want summoner with scatter shot, ignore this. Ignore the points into goblin and just change, uh, put those eight points somewhere else, like here or like revolt or. Um, see, this one is with no novice. If you don't want uh, the novice, you can do it like that and you can remove the points from the goblin, put them into ice shield and uh, maybe. Uh, this is actually good for a basic attack build. This one is if you're using basic attacks. That's why it's uh, explosive arrow. Because explosive arrow um, gives you, when you max it out to, to max level, uh, with the plus two points uh, from the set, uh, you get uh, extra, I'm gonna show you in the game. Let me check if you're seeing it. Uh, you're not seeing it, just a moment. So if you max out this skill, you're getting using explosive arrow makes your next uh, uh, three ranged basic attacks explode for 50% weapon damage. So this one can go very well with this one, um, but on the on the cold heart, it can actually go very well with every relic uh, relic skill like that. So if we go back to the cold heart. Uh, where did it go? Uh, honey view, honey view. But yeah, I'm gonna update the scatter shot skills and do the same thing I've done for all my other builds. Uh, I thought this uh, this build would not be that popular, and uh, I was wondering what to do with it. But you can see there's some ideas of how to do uh, relic stuff. Um, ignore the other stuff. Just look at the relic stuff. And if you want, uh, if you want this to be strong, code front. Max it out and put four points into uh, into onslaught to get uh, the tier two bonus of onslaught for 10% relic skill damage, and then you might want to stack some other things that give you relic damage or cold front damage. Uh, consider using something like that. But in general, this is not that much for the it's not that much for the damage. It's not gonna do this much damage. I think ice shield is the best damage skill uh, of this relic. Ice Shield and Snowstorm are amazing, uh, and probably much better than uh, uh, than uh, Frost Blast. This one is also not bad, and for a basic attack build, this one would work fine. Um, if you can squeeze it in, you can try using the Novus, or you can try using Ice Shield as a one-pointer. So I say you can take this here. And rework it, and instead of uh, explosive, use targeted strikes maybe, and then uh, remove those eight points, put them into ice shield, and maybe try and get uh, plus two levels to ice shield or plus two levels to another thing. In fact, you have one spare skill point. The thing is, you can't have ice shield with this setup if you're using basic attacks. But if you remove the basic attacks and remove those points here and remove the four points into scatter shot. You can just put 8 points into this one, uh, you can put 10 points into here, uh, and it could work. Uh, I mean, if you want, hit me up on Discord and I can send you the screenshots later tonight after my stream, after I rework them, um, and uh, give you some suggestions of how to build uh, a targeted strikes or uh, anything else that's not scatter shot uh, with, the, with the cold heart. Just have to let me know whether you want basic attacks or not. Okay, now let's uh, let's go get some stuff to sell and try not to die because I've got zero potions. But yeah, I'm gonna rework it. Um, and the icy dragoon. Dicey Dragoon 202, welcome back to you as well. Okay, again, uh, I'm having problems with the potions. Come on, potions.
Maybe I can get some gold from here. No, oh, I've collected all contract rewards. Well, I need potions. You look pale. Can I offer you peace? Is that all? But yeah, we'll see what what they're gonna do with the cold heart uh, to to make it a little bit um, more uh, appealing to people as a subclass than it is right now. But the Electrode, uh, on the other hand, is such a good relic, so anyone who chooses it for any class uh, will be really loving it. If you like lightnings uh, covering your screen. <laughs> The only downside to the Electrode is uh, it's not good for people who have problems with uh, with uh, effects clustering up on the screen. If you don't like your screen clustered up from effects, probably stay away from the Electrode and uh, the Electrified Sharpshooter. <laughs> Otherwise it's, it's great. <laughs> Killed him with the barrel. <laughs> Is this fire damage? It's not fire damage, so I might as well just... Okay. Let's find Dog Jockey. This guy's tanky. He's so tanky. A uh, no game volume for you? Uh, uh, is anyone else not hearing the game volume, or is it just the icy dragoon? Let me know if you're not hearing it, because uh, I think, yeah, my stream is detecting it. I mean, huh?
I mean, I can increase the game volume. Let's see. That probably was too loud uh, as game volume for you. I reduced it again. Okay, so other people saying there's it sounds fine on their end. All right, well. Uh, if you want me, I can I can increase the game sounds a little. Like let's do it like this: minus nine dB, minus eight point nine dB. Um, just let me know if 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 the game is too loud or if my voice is too loud. Uh, I uh, I really love feedback like that. I want the stream to be um, good for all of you watching it and to enjoy it. So if my voice is too loud or if the game is too loud, just let me know. I know different people prefer it differently, so it's gonna be hard to please everyone. Uh, but I try to uh, make it uh, at least some sort of a middle ground. I normally personally prefer um, the game sounds to be a little bit uh, quieter than the music. Um, that's how I play games. But when watching streams, uh, I do do like um, a balance between mic sound and games. Oh, oh wow, wow, I almost died. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to... See, this is what I'm talking about, the, the boring potion system. Uh, it's so bad on ridiculous uh, when, you're, when you actually need all the potions. You just constantly find yourself traveling to the city to buy one, two potions, and then a few minutes later you have to go again. Potions and, I mean, for, for the past 20-30 minutes I've been going back and forth into the town to get one, two potions. And then it's just... it's terrible. And I never have more than enough for one or two potions or three potions. This system just needs to remove the potions as drops from the game and just uh, let you use the, the, the potion as soon as it's ready on cooldown. And you can just save the cooldown for when you need it instead of spamming it. Thank you, uh, Maharaja86, for the follow. Really appreciate it. Uh, um, welcome to the Struck Club. Well, you may not have potion problems, but I always have potion problems. So... I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that is using potions as often. I mean, not everyone is as meta and can dodge every single attack. If a game expects me to not get hit at all, then there's something wrong with it. Because uh, I'm not playing a bullet hell where, where I'm gonna avoid every attack. That's why I'm stacking defense. What's the point of defense? Um, if I... If I um, if I can't uh, survive uh, when stacking it and just... I don't know, I think the potion system just needs some sort of change. You can see... I, I can't finish a single dungeon because I've already went three times to the town for potions in this one playthrough. And I'm already back to zero potions. I'm back to zero potions. At least it gave me one, but now I use it and now I'm back to zero potions. Just fucking remove the, the stupid potion drops and uh, and make it something that's only on a cooldown. It's gonna be much better, much better. If we don't have to worry about potion drops and just uh, know that we've got a cooldown and uh, we have to just save that cooldown for when it's needed. I mean, I'm constantly struggling with that, and this is making everything so, so boring. Uh, going to the city back and forth, 
every 2-3 minutes. And the problem is the, the gold. If I got more gold, I could, uh, I could just get 20 potions every time I go to the city. And then be okay, be done with it. I think the one thing they need to make is champions should drop a potion 100%. You kill a purple enemy, you get a potion. You kill a yellow enemy, you get a potion. You kill a green enemy, you get a potion. Because normally I waste between 2 and 3 potions on average on, on a champion pack. And if I don't get a single potion back, I'm obviously gonna run out and have to go buy new ones. If they are thinking of champions as an enemy you can defeat without spending a single potion while leveling up, then that's the wrong way of thinking. See, I, I can't even buy a potion now. Well, now I have to go and change the difficulty. Because obviously Ridiculous is uh, imbalanced when it comes to potions. It's just not fun, not fun. Every two minutes back to the town. Two minutes back to the town. Two minutes back to the town. Why? Why does it have to be like this? And I was so close, so close to Dog Jockey. I'm just gonna rush now and uh, push through. Oh, movement speed shrine, perfect. Yeah, sometimes thing, things piss me off and then I switch difficulties to practice because, yeah, if something's imbalanced, I can't enjoy it. He should be somewhere here. Maybe it's on the other side. By the way, for practice, there's a lot of enemies that are purple and yellow. Oh, potion. Oh no, that's an enemy. But yeah, uh, loading screens is not the way I want to play my game. Loading screens every few minutes. Okay.
You just stop playing your level 44 Bane Sharpshooter, that was a fail. Why? Why was it a fail? The, the level 44 Bane Sharpshooter. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, I guess I guess it depends though. I mean, if you don't if you don't like uh, having to stack all those summons, it's definitely not as good as a real master bane, because the summons don't do as much damage on the sharpshooter or on the bane. They don't do as much damage as a as a train car, like flamethrower or shotgun car. So damage wise, um, probably not as good. But that's just a problem from the summon skills being weak. Goblin Legion's damage is terrible compared to compared to flamethrower car. Even with the relic um, bonus 25% damage, even with Miasma's 100% extra damage, uh, even with stacking bonus damage to Goblin Legion, even with the rifle giving you extra bo uh, extra three goblins. You're still not gonna do as much as um, as a flamethrower car, so I'm assuming that's what you're referring to as a fail on the sharpshooter um, bane. You used scatter shot. Okay, interesting. I can tell you, yeah, the, the Bane Sharpshooter definitely doesn't feel like... Uh, it doesn't feel like a summoner build on Grim Down. On Grim Down you can see how fun a summoner build would be. You're just walking and the summons are annihilating everything. Uh, I can agree that summoner builds in this game with the Mage and the Sharpshooter don't feel like builds... Um, like summoner builds um, in Diablo 3 or in Grim Down or even in Diablo 2. I've not played one in Path of Exile, so I can't tell you. Um, but I've seen others play summoner builds in Path of Exile, um, Necrus and stuff, and um, annihilating things as well, super easily. Um, it felt like a tactical build. I can tell you that's how it feels. That's really how it feels uh, playing a summoner build. You're relying on the pets of, t on, of taunting stuff and while the pets are taunting, if you're playing it with scatter shop, you can charge it up and then teleport but the pets themselves don't do the damage uh, as much as you do. So the pets are like a support system rather than than the main source of damage. If you rely on just the pets to do damage, if you stop using uh, your uh, precision skill, for example, there is no way of having a decent build without using at least one precision skill for damage. And there is no way to get the damage just coming from the summons. But uh, the whole class is meant in such a way to be combining uh, precision with uh, with adventurer skills, with that whole uh, three next precision skills uh, benefiting from a certain bonus after activating an adventurer skill. That whole mechanic kind of forces you into into mix and matching uh, and having at least one uh, spammy skill.
Whereas with the Realm Master, you can have a build where you're not using a single active uh, slammer uh, damage skill. You can probably use only uh, Blasting Charge if you want as a damage skill and it could work. And the train can do all the work, the train can do all the damage. You can just walk around and let it kill stuff. It's not the same with, uh, with Sharpshooter. And it's not the same with Disc Mage either. On a single target, on bosses, if they focus, um, yeah, Shasta with the big spider queen, with goblins, could feel okay. But there's that one problem when the monster's HP keeps swagging and it goes down, then it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up. So that's the thing I'm finding in every every single Bane build. Regardless uh, whether it's Forged, Realmaster, Sharpshooter or Disc Mage, I have this problem when I'm playing Bane builds. The monster's HP is rubber bending. Like uh, this HP is going down, up, down, up, like tick, 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 something like that. I don't know why, uh, but there are some problems there with the calculations, with the synchronizing of of the pet damages on the on the enemy. Yeah, that's still there. That's still there. It only happens on Bane builds. The more summons you have, the, the more it will it will happen. If you get uh, a lot of spider... For example, let's say you're using uh, all the goblins. And let's say you're using some spiderlings from Miasma. Let's say you have a uh, uh, spectral spider to get another six spiderlings. And then the queen. And then Shasta. You're gonna have so many things hitting. Let's say you add Bone Walker, Bone Razor for another ten skeletons. You're gonna have so much, uh, so much uh, HP rubber bending. Damn, I'm having problems with the potions on practice. This is my life now, having problems on practice versus enemies two levels lower than me, and I'm having problems with the potions. So I, I came to practice from ridiculous because I had problems with the potions. Now I have those problems on practice. I don't remember it being like that before. Why why am I having the problems now on on a build that's super high damage like the Electrode Sharpshooter build? Is it because I'm playing Onslaught? Is it because I'm not playing targeted strikes? Uh, or tight grouping or explosive arrow? It could be Onslaught because maybe things are not dying quickly enough because Onslaught is underpowered. Um, and because I don't have Shasta and I'm taking damage a lot and I need um, I need potions a lot but uh, it's terrible when even on practice uh, I find myself struggling with uh, with the potions what self heal on the pet um, what self heal on the pet? Is there something new? Oh, that reminds me, I've got new pet skills to put here. The pet is not using my potions. I mean, I can heal my pet when I use a potion. But the pet is not uh, the pet is not using uh, my potions, so I don't think uh, how this will have anything to do with me uh, running out of potions. I mean, yeah, the pet can heal me if I had the skill, but it's only once every 30 seconds. Uh, it's only once every where is it? It's only once every 30 seconds healing friendship. So it's not gonna be that big of a change, but yeah, it is nice to have it. And I don't have Dryad's neck bend, but I'm talking about people while leveling up. You, you can't expect someone that um, 
that's on a fresh hero, um, fresh account, to, to have uh, things like healing friendship and to have uh, dryad snake band. It's just not reasonable to expect uh, people to have min maxed builds while leveling up. And this is why I consider myself a casual player, because <laughs> even though I I might play a lot of um, a lot of playing hours, I might have a lot of hours in the game. Um, I just don't play meta. I don't use my potion uh, at the very end when I'm about to die. If I'm under 50 or under 70 percent HP, I'm gonna use my potion to avoid getting one shot. Four potions, hope that's enough for a boss fight. See, this is such a slow fight and that was on practice. Imagine how long this fight would have taken me on Ridiculous. Yeah, I still think Onslaught is trash. I mean, they didn't change anything with Onslaught. They didn't change anything other than uh, other than affixes that give damage to Onslaught. But it's super easy for, for an enemy to move away from Onslaught before the duration is over. Even if you have Shasta taunting, you can't guarantee that the enemies or Shasta will stay where Onslaught is. So instead of giving us those affixes, they should have uh, considered buffing the damage of Onslaught itself. It's good though, I've tested it at tier 3 with gear. I've tested it at tier 3 with gear with the summoner build and it worked fine. For a Bane summoner build, uh, upgraded Onslaught uh, um, is fine, but Onslaught is not good for leveling up. In the early levels it's terrible, in the high levels with gear when you're strong, uh, it's good, but it's still nowhere near targeted strikes, nowhere near scatter shot, nowhere near explosive arrow or tight grouping. So any other of the four skills would give you better DPS. It's just that it, it's, it's now at an acceptable stage, at an acceptable state, but it's still underwhelming. It's still, uh, and maybe trash is my, maybe a little bit of a harsh word, um, but... Um, I think this build with Onslaught would be good because that's a lot of hits per second. And still not as many hits per second as uh, as targeted strikes. 
that's how I think. I will experiment. When I level this one to 60 or at least 57, and I've got level 60 items and I'm fighting level 60 enemies, I will see how strong it is. But uh, the struggle is real. Leveling up uh, with Onslaught as a skill uh, is just not, uh, it's not fun. It feels bad. I'm gonna save my next skill points for Lightning Strike. You need to go to Travel Point. Isn't this place amazing? Wait, uh, oh yeah, Yapper. And the thing is, I'm even wife binding my gear when I can. Wait, how do I have Act 2 potions? How did I get Act 2 potions in Act 1? Might as well fill them up. Oh, where did I end up? I accidentally teleported to my portal instead of the waypoint. Oh boy. <laughs> my portal has expired, so thankfully. One less loading screen. I mean, I'm not gonna have potion problems on practice now because I don't have gold problems anymore. But I had potion problems earlier until I found gold. And I, until I got 20 potions. I'm gonna stop having potion problems now that I've filled up my potions to 20. But let's let's just wait and see <laughs> if, if my potion problems will continue now that I've spent gold to get 20 potions. But if I go on ridiculous, those 20 potions will be over in like less than 5 minutes probably. <laughs> your game stopped working, time for a break. Did you update your game by the way? Uh, there was a patch today. might have crashed due to that. Okay, yeah, breaks are needed uh, sometime. But yeah, I'm gonna prove that Onslaught is bad for leveling by, by using Onslaught to level. On practice, I mean, if it feels weak on practice, then it's not gonna be good on ridiculous either. And in order to squeeze the most out of Onslaught, you need Royal Shasta and you need um, Tier 3 Reward. Without Tier 3 Reward, Onslaught is just shitty, because you don't, you don't... You can't spam it as many times as, as possible. And on enemies that are very mobile, um, you're gonna have a lot of uh, times where the enemy just goes out of the onslaught um, duration circle. Someone has to do all that testing. <laughs> 
to confirm whether something is um, is sufficiently DPS -y or not. But I can't say I expected Onswold to be super strong when they didn't give it a single damage boost other than affixes for percent damage. And to get those affixes for percent damage to Onswold you, you have to sacrifice cer certain other things. Such as crit chance, crit damage, um, flat damage etc that can roll on certain pieces of equipment. So then there's the question, is it even worth it stacking damage to Onswold? Just so you can get more out of it. I'm gonna try and use it as a proc monster setup, where Onswold is not the one doing the damage, but it's the one that's proccing multiple things per second. I'm gonna see if that's gonna work. Once we uh, we talked to uh, we talk in one of the Mayhem Mondays about skills and about onslaught, and since Michael said uh, it's uh, it's actually good, um, I decided okay I'm gonna test it with uh, with an electrode. Maybe it's gonna work with electrodes. Okay, but in order to do that, I need to I need to level up and see uh, with the right gear how it's gonna work. If it triggers thunder strike often enough. That's good, but you see how easy it is for an enemy to get away from Onswald's uh, circle. Uh, let's check how it's gonna work with Shasta. Shasta is probably gonna be super important uh, to make sure they stay inside the circle and don't stray. But there's some enemies that always move. Goblin hounds. Um, uh, the charge bucks uh, in the Hivit Frontier, the Nethering uh, Warriors or Brutes or whatever they're called that constantly charge you. Uh, who else moves? Um, was there an Automaton that moves? Or Vultura? I'm not sure whether there was Vultura or Automaton that moves. And charges you. I still think practice is not practice enough, practice is not casual enough. I said that long ago, like a month ago, I didn't see any changes to practice. Practice remained as difficult as it is. I mean, if a mode is called practice and it's the easiest in the game, you should expect to, to steamroll everything without wife bounding your items. Right now my, my weapon is wife bound, yet... Um, it's still taking me a long time to kill a single boss that's uh, one level under me. And I still find myself needing to, to heal up a lot on a difficulty called Practice. The easiest possible difficulty in the game where it should be basically you steam rolling everything uh, with zero resistance. If you just want to play it for the story and to rush through it. Okay, uh, let's uh, do this. I mean, I'm upgrading my gear substantially now. Electric damage. So this ice damage I don't need, but the crit damage I need. Right, nether in pie ones.
here. I'm just uh, worried I might have missed a pie one, so I'm gonna go check here. Maybe there's a pie one I've missed. Don't wanna have to backtrack later when I'm at the end of the map. Probably a pie one there. Alright, let's see this enemy. The most uh, the most beefcake of all the enemies. There isn't a boss uh, that uh, that's slower to kill than this one, and more boring. Uh, there isn't a more boring boss fight uh, in this game than this one. Thankfully I'm on practice, <laughs> if I were on practice it would have been, what is it like 70% um, damage reduction, the boss would have had 70% damage reduction, so I would have been doing only 30% of my damage. They've removed uh, this enemy's charging. It used to be more fun to fight this guy. He used to have a skill where he charges you. I'm not sure why they removed some of the skills he uses and made the, the boss fight uh, very simple. He used to charge at you, like he used to do like a bull charge. Um, of course people could, uh, could exploit the bull charge and glitch the boss. I've done it. Uh, you could glitch the boss over here, uh, or over here, where I am, and then stand on the other side and attack him. So if he's standing here, he's gonna try charging you here. And he's just gonna keep hitting the wall, and you can just attack him with ranged attacks from here. And vice versa, if he's standing there, he's gonna try to come here, and you can just attack him from this place. So maybe that's why they removed the charge attack, to avoid people cheesing him. Uh, I don't see another reason why they would uh, remove such an amazing uh, mechanic that made the boss have a face where he's constantly charging the player with a bull charge. So it was either intentionally removed or, or it's a bug and they still haven't fixed it. One of the two. I don't think it's a bug though, it seems like something that they just felt um, didn't um, belong in this boss fight. But I miss this one, because it was fun, it was fun uh, paying attention to when he's gonna charge you. Maybe it looked too much like White Vault and they didn't want it to have the White Vault mechanic and to feel like a different, uh, not repetitive, seeing the same skill on every boss. There must be a reason behind it though, that's kind of the point here.
Come on, come on. By the way, my webcam probably would... I would probably be able to, to use it soon. We'll see. The thing is... Uh, I've ordered a PCI Express extension card. So I can have USB-C on my PC. Because my case is a very old case and doesn't have USB-C. Um, 3.1 Type-C. My, my motherboard has USB 3.1 Type-C, but not at the back panel, only at the front panel. Because I didn't think I would need USB Type-C when I was ordering my motherboard. I, I just wanted to, to, to get something cheaper that doesn't have this much expandability. And uh, now I can't use my web camera until I get this uh, PCI Express expansion card, which I've ordered. It's going to be here in a few days once, uh, once it gets delivered. Uh, from the warehouse uh, where they're storing it um, but then I'm not gonna be able to use my web camera or I wouldn't want to use the web camera until I get my green screen and lights so probably by the end of this month uh, it should be fine uh, I should uh, have all those things sorted eventually when I sort my uh, Google paychecks uh, and uh, all my details uh, and get some some books from Google which I do have. I do have some, some books in my uh, AdSense account. I just can't access them because um, I'm changing my bank details and uh, I'm waiting for my ID to be updated because it expired a few, few days ago. But yeah, I will buy a new PC case. I will buy a new PC case um, better than this one. But for now, the temporary solution is this... PCI Express USB expansion card. <laughs> so, so instead of waiting until I can buy a new PC case, uh, which I will need eventually when I upgrade my video card to 3070 NVIDIA, I will need a new PC case because I don't think a 3070 will fit in my current case. And my current case is shitty anyways. So soon, soon, soon you would be able to, to see my my muck <laughs> but it's not me that you would want to see it's my pet my pet who normally sleeps uh, uh, behind me uh, in the background uh, behind my chair uh, that's where his bed is so you would be able to see him in the background uh, <laughs> sleeping tightly although right now he's not there he's actually sleeping on the bed the human bed <laughs> but yeah, I kind of didn't expect Logitech uh, to make their camera be plugged into a 3.1 USB Type-C instead of uh, Type-A. Super unexpected. Like uh, They obviously made the camera to be able to, to be used with laptops, because uh, most new laptops have a Type-C on the side, or two Type-Cs. But yeah, uh, kind of uh, unexpected, un uh, unpredictable stuff. I mean, I, I, I should have read, I should have read the description of the, of the camera. But even if I saw that the camera uh, is USB Type C, I still would have gotten the same stream cam, because I don't think there's a better bargain out there as a streamer camera. Either the old Logitech ones in the 92022s or the new stream cam that's that's the kind of cameras i think are worth it even razer q uh, doesn't seem that good of a bargain compared to to the logitech uh, cams that have been used uh, by many and uh, many people have been saying good things about Alright, I'm gonna try and push. I'm gonna try and push through. I'm level 14. Wait, where am I? What, what happened? Why am I here? Why am I here? I, I think uh, I messed um, something up. I need to go... Oh, I see. I need to go to Lake Gobdunk. 
I need to go to Lake Gobdung. I was wondering why I'm fighting level 9 enemies. It made no sense. So I shouldn't go to Lakeside clearing Lake Gobdung. And then it was switching grounds, right? Yeah, switching grounds. Gotta love the mobility of the sharpshooter. It's the class with the best mobility. Disc Mage with Woominous Run plus Shadow Step could be um, just as good. But having Reload twice, I only have it once right now, but eventually having Reload twice uh, and, um, and Ghost Visage tier 1, you can have 9 uh, consecutive... Uh, actually, it's not gonna be 9, it's more like uh, 10 or 11 consecutive... Uh, goes visage uh, blinks so even the disc mage when using both movement skills because it's the only class that has two movement skills even then it's not gonna be as good as uh, using reload and just uh, spamming your blinks Uh, they keep spawning portals in front of your wood. And uh, Vart Dauphs. Uh, with tier 1 and reward you have infinite teleport. Once you use the, um, your teleport you have reward backup. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, and if you add the second, uh, the, the second reward, tier 3 reward, uh, you can just kind of do it. Uh, you can just kind of uh, keep spamming that uh, even more. Like, uh, even if you don't use it immediately. Because right now I've got some downtime, but if you have two reward charges, that's it. That's uh, the infinite uh, blinking. And that's probably one of the major pulls, major reasons uh, why Sharpshooter is this popular. I mean, it's not the biggest reason, but uh, it's uh, definitely a good reason for Sharpshooter to be popular. Um, and I can tell you it is uh, the most popular class on my channel at least. I can see what builds people are watching more than others. Um, and uh, that was even since the start of early access. People have always been watching more sharpshooter content than any other class. Uh, and that's strange. I was expecting this match to be the one that people watch the most content for. Uh, but yeah, Sharpshooter is the preferred class out of the two, uh, between Disc Mage and, uh, and uh, Sharpshooter. But uh, on third place is the Realm Master for how, how much uh, people watch uh, the content for that and how much people read the builds for that. And uh, Forged is, as expected, um, dead last out of the four. I can even tell you regarding relics, which ones people um, 
I have to check the statistics uh, on my channel and on my website, but I can um, later tell you. Uh, I'm probably gonna write those down which relics um, people watch and play more on YouTube and on my website. I think Electrode um, and uh, Flaming Destroyer and Boot Drinker are probably the ones people um, watch content for more. Although I can't say Bane is not uh, something that people enjoy, but Cold Heart is probably the one that uh, that gets uh, people interested the least. And for a good reason, right now it's kind of underwhelming. It seems like a good idea, the way they've designed Cold Heart, good idea, but certain numbers need to kind of change. Or certain mechanics. I definitely agree how uh, someone earlier said that um, Breaking Point needs to have more things proking it. It would be nice to to maybe every second or every third or every fourth evasion uh, or every second, third or fourth block chance to, to proc it. Let's say at breaking point level 1 every sixth time you block uh, or evade uh, it can be changed whatever fits um, you trigger it uh, or um, then at level 2 every fifth at level three every fourth and at uh, level five every third if that seems overpowered just change the number at level one every time tenth block or evasion and then uh, at level five every fifth block and evasion um, to trigger it something like that would work very well Have I got an extra skill point? I don't think so. Ah, how did it hit me? I was, I was definitely in between the the two uh, yellow lines, orange lines, whatever color, brown lines. Beige right, lines. <laughs> Let's make it interesting. Get I'm so glad I'm not doing this fight on Ridiculous. Because it would have taken so long and it would have been so boring on Ridiculous. And I'm playing with a very good weapon. Wife Bound. So I'm maximizing the damage to as much as I can. I've got damage in my leg armor, I've got damage in my chest armor, so I'm squeezing, I'm pulling every trick out of the back to maximize the damage, yet uh, it's still taking this long on practice, imagine doing that on Ridiculous, it would have been a 20 minute fight, <laughs> or 15 at least. Yeah. 
this one's too good to not wear I'm losing the fat damage but then that crit damage and the defense the regular defense see I'm gonna lose crit damage now but uh, extra defense I actually need that crit chance uh, let's let's keep a one-handed item All right, let's uh, go act two. You did it on ridiculous and it was pretty quick. Well, uh, I'm not a meta player. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm bad at playing games, so I'd much rather have an easy time. I can make uh, builds and even if I have the best build, uh, I can't guarantee I'm gonna control it and play it to the best a, pe uh, a person can. And I never claim for my builds to, to be the, the best ones of them all. Because I just don't care if my build is meta or not, I just like certain synergies. Whenever, whenever I've made all of my builds, you've probably seen that I just pick a build um, direction so let's say I want to take this build into a build that keeps proking stuff um, or let's say I want to make this a build that keeps healing me and so on and then I just stick to that I stick to this uh, this one thing um, as the pulling point of the build as the centerpiece of the build in the current one I'm playing uh, I want to see if I can make a proc monster version of the of the electrified oh build, yes. but uh, slightly different uh, with onslaught instead of um, instead of um, targeted strikes okay I, I need to go to my storage uh, I need to leave some items for wobies I'm already thinking of uh, other future builds I'm gonna level up from level 1 so I can have some items for them come on come on and a CCCEO says hi struck love your guides but I have one question why are you playing on, uh, in the easiest mode because I got pissed off I was going back to the city every 2-3 minutes on Ridiculous. I kept running out of potions and every 2-3 minutes I had to go back to the city and then in the end I didn't have enough money to buy potions. So I ended up uh, uh, reaching such a point in the game where I couldn't even afford buying potions. And that, uh, that was kind of the tipping point um, where I just decided fuck it I'm gonna go play on practice because Ridiculous is just... Uh, the whole potion system is the problem. The problem is the potion system. Uh, we have to keep relying on getting potions as drops. And we have to buy the potions for gold. Which is uh, it is just bad. I don't like it. One bit. Why don't I have an enchanter's altar by now? Am I missing something or... Where is the enchanting outer? I really need an enchanting outer early in the game so I can dismantle blue and legendary items. Am I? What level do we get the enchanting outer now? What what did they change with this? You have to beat... The, what sort of bullshit is this? What am I gonna do with that le legendary gear? I need those essences. I don't wanna sell legendary gear for gold. And I don't wanna sell um, all, every single blue item for gold. I want to start making essences so that by the time I reach level 60 I have some essences to work with for when I need them. Oh boy. I don't think that's a, that's a nice change. 
In fact, you start getting uh, enchanted gear from level 47. So, you start getting enchanted uh, gear from level 47, but I don't see a reason why you should wait until 47 before you can start uh, disenchanting items. I don't want to enchant items, I want to disenchant items. Uh, actually, not disenchant, but break down items for materials. I know that I can't enchant items until I'm level... Um, until I start fighting level 47 monsters and start getting enchanted drops. But I don't see a reason why we shouldn't get access to the enchanting outer early in the game so that we can break items down for essence. But in general, I never uh, I never like the change where they make uh, enchanting um, when they made enchanting an ed end game only activity. I didn't see a reason why why they felt um, the little bit of extra damage and defense people could get from enchanting while leveling up needs to go away. Wait, I thought I put my items in the warehouse. What happened? Oh, they didn't go there. Vart Dalf said, "You can't. You can beat the campaign early 40s, though. Perhaps early if you rush. Yeah, but you're not gonna get enchanting uh, items until you're fighting. Uh, you're not gonna get uh, enchanting. What's it called? Uh, socketed items. You're not gonna get socketed items until you start fighting level 47 enemies. You, can't cast that spell you can still fight level 47 enemies at level 40. I mean, uh, the Fazir's Dungeon starts at level 46." And the second stage of the Fazir's dungeon is already 47. But you're not gonna be able to wear 47 items until you're level 44. So what's the point of doing that? But yeah, you can you can break down for blues and greens um, for essences. But still, that's a terrible change to force people uh, to store to store items before they can start using them. I spent enough time playing to know that um, this doesn't feel right. If I, if someone gives me a reasonable explanation why it should be that way, okay, I'm gonna agree. But most likely, even if there's a reasonable explanation, I'm still gonna disagree, because uh, it may not be reasonable to me. <laughs> Try and uh, rush through a little. I'm gonna get wrecked if I don't get some poison resistance items. I ran out of potions, no. Sh 
shit. The worst place to run out of potions. Fuck. Wait, why didn't I lose my wife bound item? Again, the potions. The potions are just not enough. I didn't wife bind my item because I didn't have a wife bound scroll. That makes sense. Okay, let's keep rezzing. At least I've got money to rest. You're nearly dead. Fucking practice. Why should practice be this difficult? Let's keep moving. Which way is the next quest? Uh, Corpse Fire Crypt. only reason you can think of is to stretch the goodies. Uh, I don't know, uh, it seems weird to me. It seems weird to me not being able to enchant early on and... I don't see why. Why shouldn't the players be able to upgrade their items uh, early on? Especially in the early levels, you need enchanting much more in the early levels than the late levels. Because in dirty levels, this little bit of extra damage or defense you can get can make your life uh, much easier. If if you're getting unlucky with drops, um, but at least you get an item with a socket, it can add a lot of value when when you're not uh, farming and grinding, where you're just leveling up and using whatever drops. Because that's what happens when you're leveling in games, you're using whatever drops. When you reach the end game, you start farming for better items than you than the ones you've got. Now I'm I'm making up for this with wife bound. That's the way I make up for 
for getting bad drops. At least I can wife bound things. But that's only only possible when I get a wife bound scroll. And I'm not getting wife bound scrolls all the time. But at least if I need a wife bound scroll and I see a beast, I can always go inside. In the beast map. Okay, what am I gonna get next? Shocking display. Zericus finds practice really hard and his mage dies a lot. See? <laughs> I'm not the only one that's bad enough. <laughs> at least I'm not the only person that's terrible at the game <laughs> and dies on practice. I mean, I think it's just it just depends on the build, but this build destroys uh, ridiculous uh, when geared up. But when I'm leveling it up, I'm just struggling. Especially now that I'm using Onslaught. I know Onslaught is the weakest of all the... Disc uh, all the all the sharpshooter skills but my problem is not my skills or my damage my problem is the stupid HP potions and having to go to the town to buy HP potions every few minutes the game expects me to not get hit too much um, it expects me to not get hit more than bullet hells do I like being able to take hits um, and to soak up damage I'm fine with not doing, doing enough damage, but I'd rather be able to take uh, hits and survive easy. But the biggest problem is this, uh, this potion dependent um, drops, uh, or the, the drops dependent potions or whatever you want to call it. If the potions didn't depend on drops it would have been much better. Okay. Derek says it feels like some boss fights were made with multiplayer in mind. Some fight mobs uh, come from every direction and swarm you. I see Dragoon is back. Welcome back. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I think. I think every boss is okay to solo, but uh, but certain fights definitely might feel a little bit more challenging than they need to be. I feel like the problem with certain boss fights is how much HP the enemies have. That's my biggest problem sometimes. Some enemies having too much HP. But yeah, uh, for the boss fights, that's my problem. My main problem is not the boss fights, but other things. Till next time. Let's keep this here a little. I'll be waiting. You can't do that here. First rounds on. I'll keep it chill. Okay, let's talk to the swamps here. Another thing I never never liked is a change, not being able to use movement skills in the town. I understand why they don't want us to use attack skills in the town, but at least allow me to use movement skills in the town. I've always said that um, ever since they made that change. It's like uh, making sure that people take less time, uh, uh, making sure that people take more time um, to reach the end of the game. 
by limiting um, the movement speed in towns to only regular movement speed, not being able to use um, movement skills and the buffs they can provide you. the waypoint Come on. Where's that venomous nest? There we go. Okay, let's see here. You died like four times. The boss at the end of Act 2 really hurt you died four times. Oh, Sadista? Ah yeah, she could be annoying. She could be annoying if you don't uh, know the mechanic and you don't dodge at the right time. Like if you're using Wuminous Run instead of Shadow Step, you might have a little bit of a harder time. You got your 3 to max level, which is good. Oh nice, I normally don't even get my 3 to max level before. Uh, before my second or third hero <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah that's kind of how it is hooks to sky hooks to sky uh, when when I get the chance sky just woke him up <laughs> he was wondering what the hell is happening uh, but yeah, make sure you're not out-leveled by the content you're doing. If you're doing enemies that are much higher level than you, then maybe open up a map work scroll, uh, catch up with the levels, uh, maybe redo some of the open open map zones uh, in the story. Like right now I'm doing level 18 enemies on level 16, so I'm definitely pushing uh, further than, than I should be. Because I rushed a little bit. Three levels or four levels difference of the enemies being higher than you would mean a lot because um, three or four levels is a big jump sometimes in the damages of items. You can compare an item uh, at a certain level with equally equally strong item uh, of four levels higher and you're gonna see what I mean. It could jump from 60 to 90 damage. From uh, 3000 to 4000 damage, things like that. So always make sure your gear is up to speed, at least your weapon, make sure your weapon is always up to speed. Even if you die a lot uh, because your defense is lower, at least you can try and do more damage. And if you die a lot, um, get more defenses of the element uh, for the content you're doing and just keep keep uh, multiple items and just switch between fire, poison, etc. It's a very good way to make sure you're not dying as much. Stacking elemental damages and having multiple sets, but having multiple sets is expensive. Especially if you want to min-max the build and have legendary items. That means having multiple versions of this legendary item. And we all know how difficult it is getting uh, the legendary item in the first place now. Let alone 
having the right one multiple times. And again, them potions, uh, my downfall. And uh, if we add on top of that the stupidly overpowered poison, um, poison uh, fields on the ground. The hazards. Of course. Practice is just not practice. It's not casual enough. That's it. I think they really need to decrease. And actually, Max Schaefer was watching my stream uh, like a month ago or a month and something ago. And I think I mentioned it to him. And I think he said uh, that he... Or maybe that was on the official Torchlight stream. I think it was on the official Torchlight stream uh, on one of the Friday fun days. I mentioned in chat that... Uh, practice doesn't feel easy enough and he said uh, that practice should uh, feel easy enough and they should look into that I don't think they've looked into that or maybe they looked into it and they agreed that it feels easy enough well it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't and that practice mode I think practice feels harder than some of the hard modes. Uh, I, I think I've noticed when playing on normal and on hard, or at least on normal, it's a little bit easier. Uh, maybe there's something wrong with it, I'm not sure. Maybe something's not scaling the right way. But honestly, playing on ridiculous easy earlier was easier than, than on practice in, in many ways. The only thing that seems right is the damage I do. The damage I do seems like the right one, but the damage I take... ...just feels too much. And I'm trying to go for defense. Look at that. I had uh, almost 50% uh, poison defense, I think. Let me check. My poison defense was 63%. Now I'm at 68. And yet I was taking so much damage. Crit damage block chains. Uh, yeah, if I lose this defense, it's not worth it for extra extra crit damage to lose that defense. Thank you, adventurer. That spider almost made a morsel out of me. Ooh, let's hurry off to town now. I wish to be as far from here as possible. Post haste. What ho! You feel much healthier. Let's see. You have one character on normal and one on ridiculous. You didn't feel much difference to be on ridiculous. Only mid twenties to though. Well, now you're gonna feel a difference because on ridiculous you do only thirty percent of your damage. So just uh, test it on the dummy in the town. Uh, in in the fort, go to the fort, uh, do damage to your dummy, and you're gonna see uh, some of the difference. You're gonna see the damage certain things take. Of course, the dummy is not the boss, and bosses take uh, less damage than regular enemies, uh, and they also take less damage than than certain champions. 
Um, but yeah, uh, the developer should probably upload a table somewhere uh, on the wiki uh, for people to read. I think now that the game is launching uh, and the wiki needs to start getting updated more often because uh, they were constantly changing stuff uh, so if something uh, worked in one way before it, um, it could change in a week uh, later or in a month later so understand why they weren't actively updating certain uh, types of information before. I'm gonna start saving skills for Shasta. And I'm probably gonna do one more quest and uh, it's already past midnight, it's exactly midnight here. Um, and yeah, it's getting late. Uh, but I will continue this playthrough tomorrow. I will continue this play through tomorrow, but yeah, let's do at least one more quest, uh, see how far we can push things. happening oh this brings me to the polluted photo okay how did I have the first waypoint uh, I mean the first uh, passage waypoint already unlocked that seemed weird. Why did I have um, this waypoint, the the footed, uh, footed footpath? Interesting. Am I starting the, the quest with uh, Psora? Psora is usually a boss that always gets me, even if I haven't died once. In 90% of my playthroughs I would reach Psora underleveled <laughs> and get wrecked. One time I tried uh, making sure I'm up to speed with my level um, and yeah, I could finally do Psora without a problem. This time I'm not gonna be up to level. In fact, I'm gonna be very under leveled for her. You can't trust that. I'm gonna try and at least get level 18 before Psora. Speaking of spawns, uh, of, of, uh, speaking of spawns that can uh, get you wrecked, Psora has a plenty. She has a plenty of spawns, and uh, they don't give you XP, so you're fighting things that don't give you XP. Feels kind of bad. And most boss fights, in fact, every boss fight that someone spawns, those spawns don't give you XP. It really feels bad when I'm doing one such boss fight of things that can kill me easily but yet um, me killing them gives me no reward at all oh, come on I think if it can kill you it should give you XP 
if it can kill you, you should be able to destroy it as well. Alright, now the hatchery. Yeah, it's definitely proving uh, very underpowered playing uh, on SWOT instead of targeted strikes or tight grouping or explosive arrow. It seems like a skill that uh, you can get good results at high levels with good gear, but not while leveling up. While leveling up it seems like a very, very bad choice of skill as your main source of damage. Because right now my main source of damage is my relic stuff, my procs. Not uh, Onslaught, uh, even though Onslaught is my main skill, it ends up being uh, secondary damage wise. And now before I reach Sora I would have uh, of course zero potions, just after I restock to 20, now I'm back to 2, on practice, potion problems on practice. Oh, actually it was buggy. I have 12. It was showing me to... Oh no, it wasn't buggy. I'm, I'm at zero now. See, this, this potion system... Get rid of the stupid potions as... Uh, as drops. The, the constant bugs. I thought I had 12 potions. Then suddenly it changes to zero from 12. There's always been one bug or another with the potion system. I don't remember a single time in the history of this game since I started playing it where there wouldn't be a bug with the potions. Ever since May 2019, more than a year and a half, actually around a year and a half since then, there's always been one or another bug with the potion. It could be one thing or a second thing or a third thing, but there's always been something wrong. Right now it's super uh, annoying when you think you have 12 potions and then it suddenly changes um, to zero. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I was seeing two potions, then it changes to 12 and I'm okay, fine. Um, uh, I actually had 12. Then I use a potion and then it changes to zero and <laughs> obviously it's not right. But in general the whole potions is drops. This doesn't feel good to me. And I don't have money to buy potions on practice. Not having enough money for potions on practice.
Come on. Fuck. You've reached your end. Oh yeah, this is just not gonna work. I'm gonna do one more wasp map and fuck this quest. Hopefully this is uh, a little bit better. But yeah, it's it feels so so bad right now. Okay, let's see. I got a very bad map full of little spiders with poison that kinda melts me. One more level and I can get Way of Shasta. Shasta will be a game changer to the survivability. In theory, in practice, not as much as in theory, but still uh, will help a bit. If I leveled this build as a Chaotic Strikes build, it would have been so much easier though. That's why I always recommend leveling Electrode builds with uh, maxing out Chaotic Strikes as early as possible. And just spamming Chaotic Strikes uh, to kill stuff. But I decided this time to not do this um, the easy way.
Come on. That's a long map at least, at least uh, I'm getting g decent XP, so tomorrow when I continue my playthrough I will have a decent level for Psora, and by the time I reach Psora I might even be 21 as a level. But this zero potion life is uh, is hard. I wish Onswald had a little bit more range. Honestly, if, if I had more range on casting Onswald, uh, it would have been so much better. Just look at the range of Onswald. This is how far. Basically, it's almost, it's almost uh, close range. It's almost melee range, the distance where you can cast uh, Onswald. You can see the, the, the length um, of the circle, the radius of the circle. The closest part of the circle is next to me. It's within uh, a range of uh, melee attacks. So if I do it like this, this is it here, from here to here. So if, if I could at least cast it over there, in this circle here, it would have been so much better. But uh, Onslaught is forcing you into playing too close to the enemies to make sure that they're actually getting hit by it. And then no wonder I'm in need of potions that often and I'm getting hit this often. Because by the time Onswold um, has landed, they're already next to me and hitting me. Onslaught could get very well paired with uh, Swole, chance to Swole will go very well for Onslaught to make sure they don't exit um, the circle as easy. So I guess I'm gonna be looking out for shields with chance to Swole for my final gear. Shields or offhands with chance to Swole, ideally shields so I can block some, some hits. And uh, we get block chance from uh, from this right, block chance 25. From this one we get another 20. F no, from this one there's no block chance. It's 25 block chance here. If I can get another 25 from the shield, in total. Actually, I need another 15 from the shield, and then I can have 40 block chance uh, to reach the cap. So that's gonna be super easy to reach the block chance limit Klaus, hey dude, how are you finding 1.0? well there's not a big difference between uh, this and 
two three weeks ago honestly ever since they added the extra skill points there hasn't been a big change it's good i i like it uh, i mean but i liked the game even before uh, um, before I liked the game a uh, few months ago and I still like it But there are still certain things that piss me off in regards to balancing and difficulty I mean if I'm playing the lowest difficulty of the game, I'm expecting to steamroll everything and I still don't like uh, having to find potions as drops and having to buy potions I still don't like the wife bound system uh, it's uh, it's a very boring system, the wife bound system, the way it is handled right now. I liked it before uh, before they changed it uh, much better, where you can wife bound items. Uh, you can unwife bound items instead of binding them. It's much better then. But I still think it would be even better if they make it a durability system, where. Once you die, the item loses your ability and eventually it breaks down and you just need to repair it before you can use it again, rather than completely losing the item. Um, it's still the same game. Uh, there aren't big major changes to to make me change my mi mind uh, from what I thought two weeks ago or two months ago or four months ago. Although it's definitely much better than the start of Early Access. So if I compare this to June when the game started Early Access, it's like super different. Relics being subclasses, having more skill points than before. Um, a little bit more balancing has been done in multiple places. Certain skills um, uh, behave slightly differently. The Dusk Mage having harmonic form, a great change. But in general, yeah, it's still good. It's still good, but there's still things that piss me off uh, and tilt me. Uh, get me salty, sour and uh, bitter at the same time. I mean, the fact that I'm playing on practice, I only play on practice when the game pisses me off. I don't play on practice un unless the game has pissed me off. Uh, and believe me, it's, uh, it's easy to piss me off, but uh, not that easy. <laughs> and if I got pissed off at level 4 or 5 or whatever level I was when I got pissed off then there's some something that really just doesn't feel right there but yeah if I started on ridiculous and switched to practice there was a good reason to do so I procured fresh stock you kind of expect him... Well, I finished Baldur's Gate, uh, my first playthrough. And as I said, I was gonna switch to Torchlight 3 once I'm done with my first Baldur's Gate playthrough. I uploaded my first impressions video, which ended up being a longer video than I anticipated for Baldur's Gate. So, for now I'm gonna focus a little bit more on Torchlight. I'm still gonna play another playthrough with Baldur's Gate soon, maybe in a week or two. But yeah, I wanna around the launch of Torchlight 3 play some Torchlight 3. Most of the people who are in my channel are Torchlight fans and I know people were itching and asking for me to play Torchlight. So I gotta think of the people and what they want to see. Not everyone wanted to see me play Baldur's Gate 3. I played it for myself because uh, it's a game I was uh, really hyped about. But uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna wait uh, for Baldur's Gate to become a little bit better and in two weeks time it probably will be nice to, to start the next playthrough. Uh, now it's 12.25 in the morning so 20, 25 minutes past midnight so I'm gonna stop my stream today and continue tomorrow early. Tomorrow I, I'm not planning on making a video tomorrow so expect me to start uh, whenever I wake up. It's a Sunday, so it's gonna be nice. So thanks Truck Pop for tuning in on Twitch and YouTube. Keep it cool. Thanks for watching and until next time. Goodbye.